hello. Welcome everybody back to my YouTube. It's been a minute. I'm not on here as often as I should be probably, but but I'm here today and I have everybody's favorite guest on my show, Jamie Hanshaw. Yay! Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I don't normally drink coffee, but I drank a whole can of espresso last night. And I <laughs> I don't think I actually fell asleep. <laughs> last night so if I say anything crazy it's because uh, I'm sleep deprived well if I say anything crazy it's probably just because I'm crazy I don't have like a really good excuse or anything but I was <laughs> but like this really this really is a scam man you can't fall asleep if you have coffee and then you have to wake up in the morning and drink more coffee to like wake up so <laughs> Jamie's exposing the coffee scam I know we spew with see the we Okay, so what we're going to talk about today, if you guys saw the thumbnail, uh, we got kind of two topics that are somewhat, like, they kind of go together. So we wanted to do both of them. The first one is going to be this recent phenomenon of uh, ladies of the evening, shall we call them, to be polite, who, mm -hmm. especially digital ones who convert to Christianity, usually through some kind of, like, mega church or something like that. And then they make a very big public spectacle and announcement out of their conversion. And then the internet goes wild speculating, like, is it real? Does she really convert? Or is it a new grift? Or is she just trying to get all the, you know, the sucker Christian men to subscribe when she fires the OnlyFans back up, right? So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, you guys probably saw the most famous one recently, Nala the Ninja. I'm gonna let me show her little baptism, um, her little baptism video here in just a second. But guys, I want to remind you that you can buy channel memberships. You can send super chats and dono chats. The dono chat link is pinned to the top, um, and we will read them and we will respond to them probably periodically through this one. So um, let's take a look at Nala here. Let's see if I can play her a little video on Instagram. Ah, it's making me log in. I don't want to do that. You can see here her little video of her getting baptized. Let me see. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she has it on a different one where I can show it or not, but um, this is her at a mega church in the pool. She gets dunked and she comes up. Now I will say on her, in her defense, this is her Instagram. And she still has some stuff in her stories that's like maybe not the purest, but it's not like totally pornographic. She has this video, which is of her on the whatever podcast where she's like talking about all the DJ stuff she used to do and trying to be like as gross as possible. And then it shows like her baptism and her converting. So this is Nala. If you got you guys have probably seen her because everybody was talking about this. But now this is what her Instagram is. Like she is not posting nudies anymore. She's not posting the the hegeau face. A he a hegeau. Yeah. What's it called? It's this word right here. A h e g a o. It's the hmm, the climax what? face. It's the climax what? face. Oh no, this is oh, but it's an it's o an face, face, but but yes. dumb. It's, yes, it's like the anime version of it. I yeah. Guess. Hi. So I, I can't even do it. She's like, I'm trying. You got to capitalize. Either. <laughs> Jay's, Jay's going to start texting me. Tell her. Start texting. <laughs> there, there, used to be this game they, there used to be this game they play on 4chan back in the day, like post your O face and everybody would just post pictures of HP Lovecraft. <laughs> Not smiling <laughs> at all. <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah, but, but she, okay. was, yeah. she was the queen of that. Uh, famously, she did a whatever episode with my husband, Andrew, where she made the face at him and he was like visibly extremely disgusted and disturbed and everybody thought that was really funny. Ooh, she grossed <gasps> out the Christian guy who like doesn't like the degenerate stuff, right? And she even said, she's like, I'm so nervous to do it in front of him because he's going to think I'm so gross. Um, but they had like this big back and forth on that episode where he was kind of questioning her, like trying to get her to think through her life choices. 
he was asking her about her parents and what her parents thought of it. And she said that her dad used to be a pastor, but was no longer a pastor and that he now supports her only fans because she sends him money. Whoa. And he was just like, oh man, he was like, that's awful. You know, like, that's so sad. That's really terrible. And she, you kind of tell it got to her a little bit. She was kind of like, yeah, like she was kind of like, I guess it is kind of sad. Um, and then right after that, maybe two, three weeks after that, she did get baptized. Now I'm not saying Andrew did that. She mm-hmm. doesn't say he did. I'm not saying he did, but I do feel like through the course of the conversation, cause at first she was like very like, Oh, what I'm doing is awesome. My life is amazing. I get to do anything I want. I get to have adventures and learn things. And I could never have this life without my only fans. And by the end of the conversation, she was really kind of like, very open to what he was saying and a lot more you could tell he had softened her down and broken down her worldview enough that she was kind of like hmm I see I at least see what you're saying now she says that she started dating a Christian guy who got her to make he was like the big factor in changing her now guys we're skeptical we're not just gonna like immediately assume like we understand the skepticism I certainly do Jamie I think does right like well yeah because the first time I ever saw her was on that whatever show the one before Andrew um and she was such a turn off I don't know if if anybody else can see with third eye or with their noose or whatever but to me I can see like disgusting things around people that are doing disgusting things yes I'm not saying I see spirits or woo woo or whatever but like to me her behavior her um the way she was talking what she was saying it was just completely gross like grosser to me than that the Gorlock person yeah (laughs) okay I'd rather have yeah I it's just like you kind of just want to like smack them around but um so that was the first introduction I ever saw completely turn off. It, it almost made me want to do a show about like Jezebels or something. But I, yeah. I got distracted. Um, it was big time spirit of Jezebel energy because she was being, it, like I said, intentionally gross. Like she does the face, but she'll make like the, the spit in her mouth. Like, and she would go, she'd be like, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. and doing really overly sexualized but also little girl stuff and she had the the pigtails like me but with the big bows and the red hair and then the like you know they all do their makeup so they look like an an anime corn character it's like a very specific look you guys it's a very specific look that caters to a certain male audience and she was being as over the top gross as possible saying like nasty stuff she likes to do and have done to her um, just being super over the top and as crazy about it as possible in that first episode Jamie's talking about. So yeah, it was like, even people who are kind of more degen in the audience, like in the live chat, were like, ugh, this is, this is too <laughs> yeah. much, right? Yeah. It's like those cookies from Walmart, the spongy kind with the disgusting frosting on top. You know, the ones <laughs> that aren't even baked, like they come out every a uh, holiday they're like green for St. Patrick's and it, they're just gross right that's what yeah. she reminded me of and <laughs> that's such a good analogy <laughs> the second time I ever saw her was when she posted that she had converted and it caused this storm on Twitter and everyone is going back and forth is she sincere is she not is she um can she be redeemed is she blah blah is she, and uh so Little old me, I'm the world's biggest white knight for girls, right? I will jump in there and defend girls uh, that I feel like need defending because I was seeing people comment things like, she's a used up hole and she'll never dot, dot, dot. Right. And I was like, that is so terrible to a new convert, somebody who's like trying, trying, okay, they're trying. Um. And to just blast them like that. And a lot of that anger comes from like young men who were raised on the cartoon corn that she is embodying. Yeah. And they're not and angry they're trapped for- by it and they're resentful and angry about it. Exactly. They're addicted somewhat to it. Under- somewhat and understandably so, but yeah, I know what you're saying. I understand what yeah. you're saying. So 
they're addicted and they are trying to outsource their guilt on uh, other people and other girls from, you know, ensnaring them in this terrible thing that they know they're participating in. They know it's bad, but they can't stop it. So they try to blame other people. Yeah. And so there was this whole firestorm back and forth, like, is she sincere? Is she not? And so I thought about it for a second, you know, after defending her, <laughs> Uh, I was like, you know, Anton LaVey talks about this. Um, carnival preachers, revivalists, these yeah. old timey um, traveling uh, church, like cult, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Like they would go with the carnival. Yep. And they were part of the show. And they aren't necessarily Christians, but they know how to preach, they know how to get people. Um, uh, in their emotional thinking, in their like revival, and they have that cadence and they know how to speak. And then Anton LaVey said, you know, the carnival preachers were a lot of times worse people than the side show freaks or the uh, magicians or whoever, the lion tamer, the uh, trapeze artists, like the, the preachers, it was all part of the, the show. Yeah, they were like the biggest swindlers of the carnival, more than the little right. carny who tries to get you to play the games you can't win. Exactly. And so they are a lot more dangerous because, um, you know, Christians are a soft target because they want to be receiving of people's forgiveness. I mean, of they want to be receiving of people and forgive them. And like we yeah. all pray for everyone to get saved, obviously. Yes. Um, and we celebrate. But- we celebrate when people convert and when people get baptized it's like one of our big celebrations yes probably know fun. that yeah. right so nobody is beyond redemption i mean uh look at paul he killed christians and then he had a 180 conversion so i'm saying it's not out of the realm of possibility that she just woke up one day and decided to like turn her life around right but we also have to, you know, kind of be wise as serpents and not like follow every little conversion story because look what happened to Kanye. Yep. That's a very Um, good example. So he was going to church. He was giving prayer um, meetings. He was giving sermons. He was all about, he was, he was building a church. He made a whole album. Yes. And now look, He's walking around with his naked wife and no teeth. So what happened to his so-called, like, seeing the light and his conversion? And, uh, I mean, what we think that we know is that he was just put back into the program, the MKUltra program. Um, They did some recalibrating to that poor guy. And now he's what we see now. I'm not saying he's not sincere in his conversion, but... What we're seeing here, and this is why people are disappointed and arguing about Steven Crowder all the time this week. I know. I'm arguing about all of these conservative influencers because they're false idols. Of yeah. course, we're going to do shitty things. Sorry, I, can't, I don't know if you're supposed to say that. You can say channel, shitty. But... Oh, okay. You can say shitty. <laughs> of course, they're going to act naughty. Of course, they're going to let you down. Of course, of course, because they're not Christ, okay, and they're not priests they're not like even elders of the church they're just this is the showbiz and i want you guys all to realize this even me and rachel this is still showbiz like we we are ourselves and we're not lying but there is an element of like you know showing entertain you to a degree for you to want to even watch right right but we are not your spiritual leader we're not like uh barely even a like you know, role model. Um, no. So a In lot fact, of people. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you brought that up because this is something that I feel like that, and I wouldn't consider myself famous, guys. Like I have this tiny little niche internet, tiny minuscule, tiny amount of fame, but it's enough that people who don't like my message or don't like what I talk about will always attack me. There's people who've been paid to do videos lying about me, making hit pieces on me, telling you everything I've done since I'm 17 years old as though it's facts when it's all fake and gray. Um, But the reason that I feel like they do that is they'll say, look at Rachel or look at Andrew or look at Jay and Jamie. 
they come out here telling us they're the ultimate Christians and we should all look to them. And it's like, I've never heard Jay or Jamie say, look at to me as the example and follow everything I've ever done because I got it right. You'll never hear me or Andrew say, look at us as the example of how to parent correctly or live righteously and stay on the narrow path. Like we've never said that. In fact, I've said multiple times, and I know Jamie has too, that one of the reasons we're on here talking about this stuff and teaching people things we've learned is because guess how we learned it? We learned it the hard way. Yeah. We did make a lot of mistakes and we did go down wrong paths in our lives and then corrected, you know, we, by the grace of God, corrected our path. That doesn't mean we think we're examples or anything like that. But what people will do is they'll build you up as a straw man and they'll be like, I'm going to expose her. I'm going to, I'm going to show everybody what a hypocrite that person is and expose them and destroy them. And it's like, I'm just here sharing information. I never say like that. I'm the example, but what some of these people do is kind of more like that. And that's the thing about Nala's conversion that I was so skeptical at first was because number one, that's a huge change to make. You should, in my opinion, take some time in your personal life to focus on that change without making the whole world aware of it, telling the entire world about it. She could have quietly disabled the OnlyFans. And by the way, I just checked, it is down. Her content's all down. The page is still up, but there's no content on it except her Christian conversion video. And her reasoning she gave for this on Twitter was that she's waiting for tax tax documents because if she were to just delete the whole account, she no longer has access. And, you know, she was making millions. She has like 2 million followers. She's one of the biggest accounts on there. So if that's true, if she is indeed going to quit, she may have to wait before actually deleting the account, but she did take down all of the content. However, when she first announced the baptism and the conversion, there was like a solid month where that was up and she even removed the paywall. Mm. So I was like, why would you announce <clears throat> that I've I've converted, I'm going to delete my OnlyFans, but then it's up for like three more, three or four more weeks with no paywall to let everyone in. So that was a big red flag. I was not so sure about that. So I didn't say anything. I was just watching, just waiting. It is down now and her Instagram is clean now, but I'm just saying like, this is a hard path. To go for, I brought, I made a tweet about St. Mary of Egypt, kind of explaining my thinking behind this. Like when you look at the saints in the church who had extremely promiscuous pasts and like their sexual temptations were their biggest vice, not very often, there's some exceptions, but not very often did they get married and have families. It was more often that they became monastics. They became like, you know, very like almost hermits in a lot of cases like saint mary of egypt did i'm not saying you have to do that i'm just saying that generally when people make conversions at least to orthodoxy from that kind of past if they get married they find someone with a similar past and similar struggles but that is tough too right because if you and your spouse both have that same uh you know demon on your back that you're always uh struggling with it, you can fall back into it together. So it's just a very dicey, tricky vice to come away from for multiple reasons. And in the digital age, you add to this the massive amounts of money and attention that are involved. And what I said was, Nala has grown up, like she started this when she was like, I don't know, 19, 18, really young, mm-hmm. and became one of the biggest OnlyFans accounts in the world, one of the most big social media sexy girl accounts there is. It's going to be extremely hard, not impossible, but extremely hard for her to go from that life with thousands of men DMing her with marriage proposals, sending gifts, sending cars, sending money. I mean, these girls get sent insane things. If you know, you know, like they get sent cash in boxes. They get sent cars. Like some dude will just buy them a Lambo and be like, I bought you a Lambo, OnlyFans girlfriend, right? Mm -hmm. And then they've got, just millions of eyes on them at all times, telling them how great they look, how much they're in love with them, all this kind of stuff. It's super hard to go from that, plus all the money, to like a simple Christian life where you are trying to reject all of that materialism, reject all that attention and the sexual attention. And now you just have one man, right? That 
that's going to give you all that attention and you have to go from doing whatever you want, whenever you want. That doesn't make as much money as you do. No. Right. And and now you've got to like dedicate your life to kids because like, you know, being a mom is, uh, there's a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of selfless things you got to do. It's a wonderful, joyful thing. I'm just saying to go from her lifestyle to like, if she woke up in my body tomorrow, she'd be like, what am I a scullery maid? Like what? what is happening? And my husband doesn't, you know, give me the attention that the 2 million men who were before are now. So I was just saying like, it's a really tough transition. So rather than like putting the whole world's eyeballs on you while you're trying to do that, I think it would be better for them if they made the conversion more quietly. The OnlyFans just kind of goes away. They don't say anything. And maybe in a, maybe in a year, maybe in 18 months, they come out and start doing some stuff. But what we see all the time, and Jamie will agree with me on this, I'm sure, we see new converts who had like this crazy past and suddenly they have a ministry. The very first thing they do, right? I'm brand new to Christianity. I just got baptized two weeks ago. Join my ministry. Send yeah. me some money. Send me some money to help me share my ministry. That that kind of thing. Now she hasn't done that specifically, but I'm going to bring up another one who has in a minute. But what That's do you think? Exactly what do you think about the Insta ministry? That's exactly what I was going to say. Like a proper conversion experience, and it is an experience that happens over time. Just like love is a demonstration of behaviors over time. It's not just one thing that you do or say at, at a certain point because you were moved to it by your emotions. And so that's the problem sometimes with Protestant um, conversions is that they are swayed by this feeling, this overjoyous feeling. Everyone's celebrating you. You're They're baptizing you. You're the center of attention, like you said, again. Um, and then you're supposed to just like go away feeling fresh as a daisy and nothing ever happened. Like I never did anything to worry about and there's no such thing as a consequence or anything like that. That's really dangerous thinking. And that's why in the church, it takes a, at least a liturgical year. So yeah. usually more. Um, sometimes they'll fast track it if they see, you know, you're a special case or you're making super good progress or anything like that. Um, but we always talk about it's like a marriage. You don't meet somebody and get married that day. You don't meet right. somebody and get married that month even or that week. It, you have to get to know them. You have to decide, I'm going to be committed to this. I'm not turning back on it. Um, and then you have to go through the grieving process of all of the time that you've wasted being stupid, like yeah. me, like Rachel, like Jay, like, like everybody. Yeah. And, it, you know, depending on how naughty you were in the past, that's going to be a, like, super dark, emotional, you're going to go through, like, the five stages of grief, you're going to be sad, you're going to not want to see people, you're not going to, like come out of the baptismal waters and start a ministry. Like you said, it takes time, even for super mature, like Christians who maybe have lived a whole righteous life. And then they go into orthodoxy. They're going to tell you like, wait a couple years before you go back into the spotlight. If that's your thing, if you're a writer, if you work in media, blah, 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 you need to take time so that you can come back uh, with the proper attitude and the proper, uh, advice or whatever that right. you're doing. So yeah, you can't just jump from the only fans to the carnival church. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was a lot of people that were giving Andrew and I grief because our catechism took three years and they were like, Oh, see, they're fake. They're fake. And it's like, we, we were very lucky because we had a priest that cared. Well, we had two different priests because um, we had kind of two churches that were both Antiochian that um, one is a mission parish and the other is like the main parish. They're both really far from us. And it's a long story, but it took three years because we had um, pastoral care that was really thorough and they really cared about um, you know us sticking with the church. They didn't want to just baptize us in six months and then have us fall away. And they specifically told us that three year mark is about where they see most new converts fall off. Hmm. So we did, we did almost three years. It was like just a few months shy of three years before we actually got baptized. And Andrew was fine with that. He was like, I don't want to like jump into it, assuming I know everything. And, 
and then fall away. Because here's the thing, you what you don't want to do is tell everyone you've converted, tell everyone you're a Christian, and then apostatize. There's, you know, that's going to be worse for your salvation than if you had never done that at all. In mm-hmm. the, I feel like there's a lot of saints that say that, that like for you to come into the church and hear the truth and take the Eucharist and then fall away is like, that's a really detrimental thing to do. And the problem with these big Protestant mega churches, like the one that she got baptized and you can see her there in the blow up pool getting baptized, right? They just do a dunk. They just dunk you at the mega church and you're good to go. Uh, you're saved. You've got your, uh, Jim Bob calls it the tramp stamp. You get your uh, Holy Spirit tramp stamp. You are now saved and you can just do whatever, right? Well, that's not how we do things in our church, but the danger with Protestantism is you don't usually have a spiritual father. You don't usually have someone who's going to advise you about how to go about your conversion and what to do when the the glow wears off. Because I feel like a lot of these girls are going from one vice to a new vice. They get this pre less like you said, this warm, fuzzy feeling of like, everybody's paying attention to me. Everyone's happy for me. I'm new. I'm a new person. I'm cleansed of all my sins and everything's going to be great from here on out. And that's not the reality of the Christian life. It's not like, oh, once you get baptized, everything goes well for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't have no, problems it goes anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to be severely challenged. Now you're and in you, the arena, right? Now you're really right. up to bat at, or in the battle on the battlefield. Yeah. Like it's yeah, not, and I think what happens to these girls is it's it's like throwing them onto a battlefield as little infants with no armor. They're like little tiny, like throwing a baby onto the battlefield and going, "Defend yourself, fight for the Lord." It's like they have no idea. They can't. They can't. They don't have the full armor of God on yet to do that. So, I I don't want to come out and be like these are fake because I don't know that. I don't know yeah. her, and this is something else I've learned from being the person on the screen is that people think they know you. They think if they've watched you on the screen, they know who you are and Mm -hmm. they will tell you about yourself and they'll tell you things you didn't even know about yourself and assume that they really, really know you. And it's like, I don't know her. Andrew met her. Um, He would know better than me, but even he was very skeptical. He's very optimistic because he felt like the conversation he had with her after the show was an optimistic conversation. So he's been like very... Like, hey, I'm not going to say anything about her one way or the other. It's her business. We'll see where it goes. But yeah, it's like, it's to me, whenever you see somebody that's a brand new convert start a ministry, that's a bit of a red flag. And I will say, let's bring up my other girl here that I have. Let's see. Um... Well, while you're looking for that, I just wanted to point out that, I mean, and this is a major point I wanted to make on the show today, like, permit promiscuous people are dangerous. Okay. I don't care if they're before conversion, after conversion. Uh, it's just, it's becoming super obvious that people who want to sleep around, want to be with multiple people who lead with their sexuality have personality disorder. Okay. Um, it's not just because they're sexy. It's not just because they uh, have all the charisma and they have a high, uh, you know, energy, en- energetic sex drive, or, or they're like, uh, you can't say no to them. They have something in them that is broken, that needs validation, and the only way, or one of the only ways they can get that is being sexual, right? Yeah. And somebody made a really good post um, before we move on from Nala. And again, I hope she's sincere. I truly do. That would be so amazing. Um, What a great story. Like you said, St. Mary of Egypt. And I even put that on my post when I was defending her. Um, And I was defending her because of the language people were using. They weren't just saying, well, maybe I'm skeptical. They were saying she'll never deserve a a washed up old, old, nasty old, this and that, run through this and that. Yeah. Yes. So that kind of stuff is like, no, we're not doing that. But um, some people was some person was making a lot of good points because um, hypersexuality is a narcissistic personality disorder trait. Okay, so you have these dark triad personalities. You have Machiavellian, you have narcissistic, and you have I can't remember the third one, but you can look up look up uh, dark triad. Okay, 
And it's not just a, a switch that switches. This oh. is something you have to recognize in yourself and work on it every single day of your life. Like I know people who, uh, you know, on social media, are like I was diagnosed as a narcissist. I don't want to be this, but it's something that I have to like fight against every day. Yeah. Um, so she's got uh, the preoccupation with power, beauty, and success. She says, I'm so competitive in relationships. I'm competing against you in every way. I need to make more money than you. I need to learn more than you. I need to travel more. I can't just be a team sometimes. I need to be the best. So there's one nugget of her psyche that we're looking at. And we're talking about men too. Promiscuous yeah. men are dangerous. They will ruin your life. Promiscuous women will ruin your life. They will... It just... It's like a domino. Like if you're a liar and a cheater and you're messing with people, you're dang you're going to be giving them STDs, right? You're going to be giving them personality trauma disorders, a uh, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. When you cheat on somebody um, and they find out you've been lying, it it's not just a thing like, oh, that's a bummer. It actually changes your brain chemistry and the way that you view yourself and the way that you view the world your brain goes into overdrive thinking it goes all the way to the past when you met that person when you're betrayed yeah it goes to the beginning and all of the memories that you've made with that person your brain is shuffling that again saying well that wasn't true because he betrayed me he he said this and that's not true so your brain is having to recalibrate 10, 20 years or however long you were with that person of memories. And that is a super like something you can't even stop or control. It's just something your brain does on autopilot, right? Yeah. So there's all of these like ramifications of being promiscuous and cheating that you don't even think about. People be crazy. Oh, yeah. You don't, you don't know if you've got two women, three women. Uh, if you've got two men, three men, they could kill you. They could kill your cheating partner. They could get so upset that they get drunk and they go out and kill somebody. Yeah, I mean, there's a streamer named Hunter Avalon who he and his wife started doing OnlyFans together. That was step one, where they went wrong. Uh, as soon as that started happening, she wanted to do the content with other men. That led to a lot of disagreements. They end up getting divorced. He jumps into another relationship with another streamer who is polyamorous and all this stuff. Right off the bat, before the divorce is even final, he's with this other chick who's into this polyamory stuff and has a super crazy jealous ex-boyfriend. And Hunter was like kind of taunting him. And the dude showed up and shot them both and then shot himself live on stream. So I don't know if anyone's yeah. seen that, but that actually happened. And that's the kind of stuff that happens with these that people. I have a very close family member who was diagnosed with all of these cluster B personality problems. And I remember going to like a family intervention kind of thing. And the doctor there telling me, like pulling me out into the hallway, because I guess this person didn't know that, that the family member had been diagnosed with this. And they pulled me out and said, if I knew that, I wouldn't have even called this meeting because with these types of people that have these personality disorders, it's pretty much untreatable. And I think that's because it's a spiritual problem, right? Mm -hmm. So they can throw all the drugs and therapy in the world at these people. But if it's just secular, you know, psycho, psychoanalyzing and stuff like it's the success rate is almost zero for right. just trying to fix those people through that. Um, and you really can't do anything. And this is what I was told. They were like, look, you can't do anything except limit the damage this person is going to cause you. Mm -hmm. Like to the extent that you have this person around in your life they're going to cause you problems because they can't do anything else. They don't see the world how it really is. They don't see other people as other people. They see other people as a means to an end and their need for their attention and their validation overrides everything else. Like that's why you see crazy people who will do awful things to their children, things like that, because it's like their need, that demonic vice they have for this attention and validation overrides everything everything mm -hmm. is just as bad as like a severe drug addiction or severe alcoholism it's like they will lie they will cheat they will steal they will tell you anything they have to tell you to get what their drug is which is the attention the validation the 
you know, feeling in control of people, making it so that the people can't leave you, all this kind of crazy stuff that these personality types do. And you're right. It's not like we dunk them in the baptismal water and that's just erased. That's not how it works. Yeah. So going back to her, just her specifically, she has um, demonstrated, you know, preoccupation with the, the power. Um, she said things that lack empathy. She said, if we're dating and you start crying in front of me, I'm just going to laugh. It's really weird for me. Um, she's arrogant. She said, I couldn't date an MMA fighter because we'd be struggling for dominance. I would literally F you until you were doubting your sexuality. My ex went gay because of it. Yeah. Um, she also said, let me keep going. Uh, you'll never want to cheat on me. You'll be drained. There's nothing left in you to cheat, but I will cheat because I'm bored laughing. Um, all these are sprinkled with giggles and squeals, eye rolls, the tongue thing, um, trying to create this like male cartoon fantasy. So all of these MPD narcissistic, uh, traits are a huge red flag. And it's not like no one has ever thought, Hmm, maybe I'll use the Jesus to get some money or attention. Right. When did that ever happen? Right. Well, when you were talking about like the carnival preachers, I thought of Amy Semple McPherson from the uh-huh. 20s and 30s. She was the first like female megachurch priest, pastor, first female megachurch pastor in LA in the 20s and 30s. Jay brought her up when we did a stream together once too. And mm-hmm. she was like this big charismatic faith healing. Uh, she wasn't a televangelist, but she was the closest thing of the time, which was she was a radio preacher, but she had a megachurch in LA that she got, it was like the most expensive church ever built or something at that time in, in history. She had this huge following and a lot of male followers. And she went through husband after husband. It was like very stereotypical. So this is not new, but I feel like the internet's made it worse. And Jim Bob was saying the other day that it's like a weird inception where it's like, we don't know now, like the internet was kind of imitating the worst parts of life. And now life is imitating the worst parts of the internet Mm. because I've noticed with all these girls, unfortunately, My husband talks to them all the time, like these, the really narcissistic personality people we're talking about. He goes on shows and kind of breaks down their, their worldview and their psychology and talks to them. And what I have noticed in a pattern is like, all these girls have the same thing. And I feel like they're playing a character. I feel like they're playing a character of what they think gets them attention and what they think men want sexually, which is you'll always hear them say, oh, I'm the freakiest. I'm the nastiest. I like getting choked. I like getting, you know, punch me in the back of the head, daddy. Like all this, the gross, sorry, sorry guys. It's super gross. I know, but they'll say the grossest things and I'm being tame. Like the stuff they actually say is way worse. And I'm, I asked myself like, why? Cause I know you are not actually enjoying and just, you don't just wake up in the morning and be like, you know what sounds good today? You know what I want to do? I want (laughs) someone to choke me. It's like, I know that that's baloney. Yeah. Do people have weird fetishes? Sure. But what I'm saying is this is performative to me. When these, yes. Like what Nala does, right? She has the whole costume. She has the crazy anime makeup. She's doing the little noises and the giggles and she'll... um like her whole body language and everything is like just so over the top. They're playing a character of like, this girl has no boundaries. This girl is down for anything. Like any crazy gross thing I can think of, this chick will do it and she will do it enthusiastically and she can't get enough of it. And it's like, that's not real. I hate to tell everybody, but that's not real. (laughs) And she has realized that you can control a whole lot of men through sexuality. You can literally con- mind control them. Like she yeah. said, you won't, you won't cheat on me. I'll just like uh, screw you until you're out of ju- death by snoo snoo. <laughs> that? no. uh, that's from Futurama, I think. Um, yeah. But okay, so let's talk about before we move um, past the promiscuous people, because I had a male... Um, Oh, oh, real quick. I want to do this one too. Okay. Okay. This girl, this girl was one of the, now I'm not trying to be mean to her either because again, I don't know them. I don't know. Me and Rachel are born to judge. 
Yeah, exactly. No, it's not we that. We are the arbiters of who is a good Christian, and you will listen to us. No, no it's not this that. Let me tell you real quick. It's like, okay. you know how when a kid moves away from his parents and a small town to the big city where he can be himself, yeah. right? <laughs> or herself. It's because none of those people care about you, okay? They don't give yeah. a shit whether you live or die. They don't care what you put in your butt or if you get AIDS or if you are like vomiting in the street at 3 a.m. and you have sores all over you. That's why. That's the non-judgmental people, okay? Right. Because they don't care the about people you. people who don't judge, yes. The people who care about you are going to say, this is not good, and I'm telling you this because I care. Right. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> well, so there was a bunch of people, and it's, I'm so sorry, Protestant friends. I'm not trying to pick on you, but it seems to be an evangelical thing of like, we always get this right. Oh, you were a single mom and Andrew smokes. Well, first of all, I was a single mom like 18 years ago. Okay. Like it's two decades ago, but furthermore, and then they'll be like, how could you get remarried? Well, number one, I was, am not now and was never Roman Catholic. And before then I was just a Protestant normie person to myself. I didn't, what did I know about Christianity when I was 22? I, I was just like a lot of these girls who was like, oh yeah, I'm Christian, but I kind of just do what the world does. And I was raised by like a Marxist feminist. Like, what do you want? I lucky for me, very lucky by the grace of God, I figured it out and turned it around. That's why I'm not here. Not because I am, I was born a virgin. I'm, I'm an ever virgin now. I'm just like Mary and all my children. I was a virgin when I, it's so silly because people want to like make me into church lady. And I'm like, I've never said that y'all made that up. But this young lady, Cheyenne Matthews was one of the ones on the panel uh, on whatever with Andrew, who's brand new, newly converted. Okay. And she was being really, her behavior was super bizarre. Like she would not answer questions that were super simple, like just really simple questions. Like Andrew asked her, like, cause Brian asked if she had a preference in men. And she was like, no, I love everyone the same because Jesus loves us all the same. And he was like, really? But would you like, would you date an obese guy though? Like you can't say I prefer not to date no like maybe I would if he was a great guy but I prefer guys who are not obese she would not answer and she was just like no because I'm a Christian and I'm not going to answer that and Andrew was you know he's his bs meter is really good so he was kind of like what is this lady's angle and they tangled up a little bit and she seemed to be like just there to piety signal and nothing else there was no substance really it was just for her to talk about herself. She All she did the whole show was talk about herself, 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 her whole life story and how pious she is now and how pure she is now and how she knows Jesus the best of anyone now. And this is her link tree. So this is a brand new girl that just converted and she's got a ministry. So her whole link tree is links where you can donate. Here's her on Snapchat. Here's her on TikTok. Here is her Christian group chat and Christian counseling. So this is another big red flag I have seen. And I've even seen some people in the Orthodox world try to get away with this, right? Like I just converted yesterday. I'm going to counsel you now. Mm -hmm. I'm, your new, I'm your new expert on how to live the Christian life. I'm going to counsel you out of your old life and into the Christian I, life. Hey, um, I've been getting um, Bible studies from... Russell Brand on TikTok. Oh, nice. And he's not even converted <laughs> yet. And he's been like sitting there with his Bible open reading. I'm like, hey, this is not bad. But wait a second. <laughs> okay. It's just it's just so bizarre to me. I don't know why. Yeah. It's like you you think they think they have to become an instant expert on this. And that's yeah. like, it's a big red flag to me. So she's got her Christian counseling. She's got her Jesus drip. So you can buy merch from her, your Jesus drip merch. Uh, you partner with her in ministry through Venmo, which is just giving her money. That's literally all it is. She does not anywhere. And I look through all these links. It doesn't say like, oh, I use this money to like go downtown and feed poor people so I can talk to them about Jesus. Nothing like that. It's just give her money. And what she's trying to say is I used to make all my money on OnlyFans, but now I'm doing this. So you got to pay me for this too. So you can pay her there. You can do PayPal. You can send her PayPal money. You can send her money through Zelle. You can send her money through Cash App. Mm -hmm. um, you can get updates. So she's got like a newsletter. But all the links here are just to give her money and watch her content. There's no like link to her church. There's no 
link for people to actually like learn about Christianity through a legitimate source. It's all her, 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 her. Give her money, watch her videos, listen to her. And so I did just a little bit of digging on her and she has a YouTube channel where she has tried like every grift there is. She's clearly wanted to be famous for a long time. She started really early on doing singing videos. She even made a bunch of music videos, like obviously paid someone to actually shoot music videos, several of them. Not that great, to be honest. Can kind of tell why she didn't blow up. Uh, so that clearly wasn't working. So then she switched to fitness content and did that for a few months. That didn't work. So then she switched to, oh, I'm vegan and I'm going to teach you how to do a vegan diet. Now I'm the vegan diet guru and I'm going to teach you new age stuff. And that didn't work. So then, then I'm a life then coach. She, now. I just got saved and now I'm a life coach. Th that's the other big thing. People who are brand new and a lot of times not even baptized. They're not even baptized. They're just catechumens and they're life coaching people. And I'm like, no. Absolutely yeah. not. That's insane. First of all, I don't believe in life coaches in general. I'm not saying you can't hire a coach to teach you to get fit or something like that. I'm just saying life coaching as a thing, my personal opinion, I, I disavow. I don't like it. I don't believe in it. I think that's what your spiritual father is for. I think that's what your priest is for. I think there are maybe elder women at your church who know you and know your actual life, not just what you tell them. And you know who they are. You know what their life is. Those are the people you go to. You don't hire some brand new fool who just converted to be your life coach. That's insane to me. Mm -hmm. But th that's what this girl did. So she went from grift to grift to grift on YouTube for like six years. It was like every year she had a new thing because the last thing didn't work out. And the newest thing appears to be Cheyenne and Jesus, right? Look at the, like, she's got the typical evangelical Jesus in the clouds thing going on here. Um, and here's the big nail in the coffin. I'm sorry to report, I went to her Twitter, her main Twitter, and the first tweet is her talking about her conversion in Jesus. You scroll down maybe six, seven, eight tweets, her corn is still there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Full, full Monty right there on Twitter. You don't even have to click a, click a link to get to it. Her Twitter handle is still her corn name. So I'm like, okay, I don't know how you reconcile that. I don't know how this girl goes on whatever podcast preaching through her ministry. Andrew gets skeptical. And it was like thousands of comments from women being like, he was mean to the Christian girl. He's not a real Christian. It's like, you guys are getting hoodwinked. You're getting hoodwinked. You go to this girl's stuff and it's give her money for her Jesus thing. And if not, go to her Twitter and give her money still for her corn videos that are still there right next to the Jesus video. Like, how? Yeah. So that's, and that's kind of all so I wanted sad. to say about her. Well, it's so sad because we're not trying to gatekeep heaven no. from people. We no. want them. But you can't idolize them right away right. or even at all. And like you said, they have got some major work to do. It's going to be hard for them. And the, maybe the, they should think of a monastic lifestyle, like you said. Like, I see this in a lot of guys, too, who leave, like, the um, pickup artist yeah. milieu. Like and they're really. like, okay, well, uh, this obviously isn't working. So I ch I'm going to do a 180 and I would like my, um, you know, virgin bride now. It's like, no, right. dude, <laughs> you're 45 and you're ran through. And I don't think you would be a good husband to an innocent young girl without a lot of um, work done. Like you can't just yeah. show up and expect all these benefits right away. Yeah. I, 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 mean, give, I, know I, give Roosh, I give Roosh some credit because I met him at the trad forum in 2020 and he wouldn't even come near me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like nuclear waste just because I'm female, but he, I found out like later, this was like his last public appearance, by the way, he's disappeared. Nobody, he's not online. And that's why I respect that. And I think that I know, that's what I'm saying. He, because he's and like, people are like, did he go into a monastery? And I'm like, I don't know. And that's the, that's how I know he's sincere. Cause I don't even know what he's exactly. doing. Yeah. Whatever he's doing, he's not online. Yeah. He's not telling people follow me. I know the way, like, it's fine for him to what he did do, make a lot of videos saying, Hey, I hoodwinked people. I scammed people. A lot of the stuff I said, wasn't even true. It was all a load of baloney. Uh, and I 
am deeply ashamed and see the errors of my ways. And he did not want relationships. He didn't want to date or anything because he was like, to him, that was a drug. To him, that was just as bad as like hanging out with people who are doing heroin when he's trying to kick a heroin habit. He's like, I can't be mm -hmm. around women. I can't have relationships with women. I'm not even close. I don't know if I ever can now. Mm -hmm. And maybe he will, maybe he won't. It's not even Rachel's business, but I know that since he's like no longer online preaching about it, he's actually doing the work probably because what else would he be doing? So it's like, I just think it would be better for them. It's not our business if these people are saved. It's not our position to judge people's salvation. However, it is our job as Christians to have some discernment and like Jamie said, be wise like serpents and say, you know, uh, good for you. I hope, I pray that your conversion is sincere and that you stick to it because we know the path you have is really tough. Like mm -hmm. we know the path that they're going down is hard. It was hard for me. Um, and again, I thought, you know, when you first find real Christianity, which I think is orthodoxy, you don't think you're that bad, right? You go, I'm not that bad. I mean, I haven't done anything that bad. It's not like I'm yeah. a serial killer. And the more you learn and the more you know and the more you get an orthodox phronema, the more you have to look at yourself. And like Father Turbo always says, you're going to find out the problem is you. It's mm. very true. It's mm -hmm. very true. And that's painful. It's It hurts no matter who you are because you're going to look at everything you've ever done differently and you're going to feel differently about it than however you reconciled it or excused it before you found the true faith. So we just know that for sincere converts coming from that life, it's going to be really tough for them. And I think the worst thing they can do is announce a ministry <laughs> and start being yeah. in charge. And, you know, God holds you more responsible. If you want to take on a teaching role, if you want to take on a ministry, you're responsible for that and you have to answer for that. So if you're doing a grift or if you don't know what you're talking about yet, or you're fill filled with pride and prelast and trying to minister to others, I see that and I get really concerned about the person themselves, as well as, you know, the people who may get misled, of course, but I see what the person is doing. And I'm like, oh, man, if you're hoodwinking people with this or if you are seriously prelested, like it's going to be bad. It's going to be really tough for you. So mm -hmm. um, kind of what did, did you hear uh, about that guy Huberman? Yes, I did. Andrew Huberman. Uh Yes. So speaking of liars and cheaters and uh, grifty people, so he's a um, Stanford University professor, yep. which is kind of a red flag. If you if you know, you know, we don't have to get into that. But um, so basically he's made a name for himself, like with the masculinity, um, with the health. Uh, mm -hmm. If your man doesn't eat sugar anymore, it's probably because of this guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and a bunch of eating disorders no just kidding but like seriously you need some sugar or you're gonna get really grumpy you can't just cut out i mean i don't know some I, people can i don't know sugar. about that but it's like here's what i think happened to huberman i think he was a nerdy professor and when he started doing the longevity research and the health and fitness stuff you have access to all the drugs okay He's yeah. on HRT. He's probably, I think he said, cause I follow a lot of like meathead dudes. Everybody knows I'm like a big gym rat meathead person. So I follow people like Derek from more plates, more dates. Uh, and he did a couple shows with him and they're talking about, you know, performance enhancing drugs and steroids and HRT and all these sort of things. And I think Huberman had access to that. So now he's in his fifties, I want to say. And mm -hmm. he's like super jacked, right? He's probably more buff and jacked than he's ever been. He's super famous. He's the number one podcaster in this men's health sphere. He's famous. He's got a ton of money. He's got a ton of prestige. So as a man who was probably nerdy and not like the dude in high school that all the chicks wanted, I think he probably went a little wild with it and got carried away with himself and did not understand like... I, I disagree with Rollo on a lot of things, but he did make a comment about this that I thought was probably true, which is he said, this guy didn't know that now that you're this rich, famous guy, if you want to be with five or six or seven women, just be open about it because there's plenty of them who are fine with it that will do that and just mm -hmm. be with them. But what you don't do is be with five or six different women and then promise each of them that they're the only one. 
because right. number one, you're always going to get caught. Number two, then you're going to have a huge mess on your hands. And number three, if you are a guy with a bunch of money and fame and you get called out by six different women who all said, he said he was only with me or you were married or whatever, that then you just shot yourself in the face. Like it's over for you. You're done. Um, and I don't think he's done, but I think that that was a big dumb mistake. Like if you want to, I used to always say this when I was younger too, because I had this happen to me. I got cheated on like seriously, which why it makes me so mad when liars on the internet say that it was me who was. I'm like, uh-uh, that was not me. I've never cheated on anyone, but I've been cheated on, and that sucks. It sucks. But I'm always like, why do those kind of people want to get with people who want a monogamous relationship? Because these days, you can find ladies who are fine, ladies because, who are fine with that. They're everywhere. Because monogamous people are not right in the head. That's why. Yeah. And right? I think they, I think there's a thrill in it for them to be secretive and like, oh, she thinks that I'm only with her, but really I'm sneaking off with Amanda or J Jane or Sarah over here. And Rachel doesn't know. Right. It's like a weird thing where it's like, I feel like that's the part about it that they like, because otherwise, why wouldn't you just do what like Myron Gaines does and be totally open about it and just be like, Hey, if you want to date me, I'm going to sleep with a bunch, bunch of other chicks. Now I don't like that. I don't think that's right to do, yeah. but at least he's not like lying and telling some girl he's married to that she's the only one while he's cheating all the time. So it's just like, I think Huberman, that was just dumb. Like for such a smart guy, why would you make such a dumb mistake? But yeah, I think he got full of pride and thought, I'm Andrew Huberman. I can get away with this. Yeah. And men can be just as promiscuous as women. Well, this is a, an equal, I mean, probably even more so. They're just not as good at it because. Right. I think well, they, I th it would be more if they could. I think there's I think women have different motives for being promiscuous. I yeah. think for women, it's usually more about resources and attention. Um, and for men, it's more about like conquering. Right. It's like a notches on your belt. I'm conquering the women type of thing. Well, I was thinking about this um, and I was like, they, they both do it for male validation because, number one, they don't have God the father. And number two, yeah. their real father probably deserves a Razzie or not in the picture. <laughs> so both men and women, because men aren't promiscuous to impress other women. They're doing it to impress right. other men. Yeah, totally. And women like are doing it to impress men too. So there's this like thing that if you don't have a, a male in your life that loves you and like you're secure in that, you're going to be looking for that through sex. Does that yeah, make sense? I agree. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, and it, you know, I think they think it's status, which like that's what Andrew and Myron yeah, were impressing men. about the other day. Yeah, Andrew was like, I think being a family man is the status. Thing. Exactly. A, he was like, anybody can just he was like, How hard is it to just get a bunch of 304s? They're all gonna line up anyway. If you got a little bit of money, you're kind of tall and good looking, like you could just yeah. stack them up all day long. Who's impressed by that? He was like. It, well, Andrew was saying it used to be like the prestige came from being a family man. Like people would talk about you at work and be like, oh, you can't fire him. He's got a family, you know, or like, well, Joe's got six kids and people would be like, wow, six kids. You know, it used to be like a, a prestigious honorary thing to like have a big family and support your family. It was, and it gave you a lot of respect in the community and put you in a higher standing. So like who's well, impressed by promiscuous men, especially these days when 90% of women hard. are just giving it away for free. Right. Well, let's hear from this guy. He slept with thousands of women. You want me to play this clip real fast? Yeah, sure. Okay. Hold on. Three girls a day on average, at least at a minimum. I mean, the, the three, girls a day. three girls in a day, that was like. We have some real off day or something, right? Yeah. Some days oh, four, hair, five, five, seven. I, the most was nine. How many? How many women have you slept with in your life total? Thousands. I, I had this image in my mind when I was growing up of like how awesome this would be. I don't know what I kind of landed on was I think it's like better to have a monogamous relationship. <laughs> Strange as that's come for me. <laughs> you got two choices. You could just like do whatever you want and you know be free and like allow the women to be free and just use condoms with all the girls and not care about if they hook up with other guys and it's just like purely sexual and whatever 
Or I think you can find a girl that you enjoy spending time with and that you actually trust each other. But I think it's unlikely to find a woman that is going to be okay with you sleeping with other women that actually cares about you for the right reasons. Even if the girl is okay with it, I think that you like cause internal damage to her. I do think that like one cool girl that you, that does stuff with you that you actually have a mental connection with. I think the sex is better. I think you're more relaxed. I think you have less things to deal with, less distractions. Your energy is not being pulled in a bunch of different directions. So I think there is hope to like, term monogamy and like staying attracted to the woman having sex with so, three girls a day there you have it he's had as many women as solomon <laughs> right yeah. well and Andrew brought up a woman too on that oh, really? stream he was yeah he was like basically the guy was crying in his beer because he's like i've had i've spent my life between the legs of thousands of women or something like that is what he said. and mm -hmm. it was all he was not any happier he was actually a lot less happy Andrew's gotten um, letters that men have written him. Uh, he got a letter from this guy in Canada saying, like, I was born into a wealthy family. I'm six feet tall. I'm handsome. I always had money. So I had, like, girls just falling out of my pockets my whole young adult life. And he's like, I couldn't remember a day that I didn't wake up pissed off that I woke up that day. Like, I don't know how many years it's been that I haven't woken up feeling like I hate my life and wish I wouldn't have woken up. And so I knew I had to change something. I was like looking for answers, uh, watching a bunch of different stuff. And I stumbled upon the crucible. And now I'm in a monogamous relationship with a nice girl. We're going to church. We're getting baptized together. And then we plan to get married. And I just wanted to thank you for like helping me figure out, at least like point me in the right direction. So Andrew's really clear. He does not do apologetics. He does not have a ministry. He's not the guy to ask about the Bible. He's not doing that. But what he does do is break down worldviews and he breaks down all the secular ones really, really well. And then he just points people. He'll say, look, go to the Orthodox discord and ask for Chase Haggard. Go to oh, Jay yeah. Dyer's channel. You know, like he'll, he'll say, visit an Orthodox church nearby, things like that. So he's super, super clear that he doesn't do that. But what he does do is just be like, look, this material worldly hedonistic stuff, it, where it, it only gets you high for so long. It's just like every other drug out there. It just is very temporary. You'll, you might feel super euphoric for a while, but then you're going to end up where that guy is, where it's like, where is this really getting me? You know? Yeah. And well, the most interesting thing about this post was the person who posted it had the worst take I've seen and oh, really? <laughs> with a cross in their bio and a, a like a muscle arm. And it says, oh, look at the whores in the comments saying he's ran through and it's over for him equals big cope. Dan can go find God and go on a holy spiritual cleanse and he would be cleansed. On the other hand, Whores with hella bodies is permanently damaged forever. That's just dumb. So, yeah. That's just dumb. That's so stupid. Anybody who has a cross in their bio ought to know better than that. And, like, here's what I, I always think, said. Okay. That's why I think some of these people are plants and uh, age of oh, yeah. And yeah. so that's why I'm not, like, totally team Nala because I know about this stuff, like, you know, infiltration and yep. uh posting that's another thing if you're posting just to get a reaction or a rise mm -hmm. out of people or to make them angry that's a cluster b personality disorder uh yeah. trait also so all of you shit posters who just like to uh say crap and make people angry and have them fight all week over something you said and you're just back there eating popcorn you're probably have some narcissistic personality disorder tendencies that you need to work through well the thing that I always say is like <clears throat> it and Andrew says this too, that promiscuity hurts men too. Like that, that was his big thing. The big conversation he had with Myron this week was about why it's not good for men either. But I will say there's a little bit of a difference, which is that when men are promiscuous, it's not any better from a salvific or spiritual perspective or anything like that. But women on average, tend to care less about men's body counts for whatever reason. It's easier for a man who was promiscuous and has reformed to find women who are willing to deal with that. That's true. It's, 
it's harder for women who've reformed to find men who don't care about their past. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying like, that's an observable thing that we all kind of can see. Um, yeah. And I will also say you that- women are a lot more, what? women are a lot more forgiving in that area just because they have to be or they'd, they'd be alone with cats. Right. right, exactly. And like me personally, I don't, like obviously Andrew was not a virgin when I met him and it didn't, it didn't bother me. Um, for the most part, other than the fact that there were still, you know, chicks hanging around trying to shoot their shot and whatnot when we were first together. But <laughs> other than that, it didn't like bother me because I just kind of am like, well, that's kind of how boys are. And I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that's correct or how we should think. It just generally is how women are kind of more like, eh, it's not the best, but whatever. Not that we wouldn't get grossed out by a guy like that because a lot of us would. I know a lot of ladies are going to be in the comments saying the guy who's been with thousands of women, that's a little gross. Well, like, I'm just looking all, at you like a Petri dish. I'm just like, ugh. What's, where, where do you find the time, like, to cook your own meals and three people a day? I mean, three different people? Like, where are you hanging out? On those I yachts? I not come in contact with three people a day, whether, <laughs> I mean, let alone people I don't want to sleep with or who sleep with me that's crazy well las vegas is like that miami mm -hmm. is like that new york la a lot of these metropolitan areas are like party hubs now they're kum kum pod cities right and everybody has their party spots and people are just so accepting of everything and anything now that it's like they will do that kind of stuff which is totally this is where i look like a totally vanilla midwestern rural girl but to me that's mind-blowing like i can't imagine i never have been on a dating app i've never done hookups i always was just like i just want to be married and have babies and that's the only thing i've ever been interested in i know so it's funny yeah. when people assume stuff about me but i'm just over here going like i used to work with girls when i was 19 20 21 22 i worked at makeup counters i worked in hair salons and the girls would come in with stories that like turned my hair white. I think that's why my hair started going gray when I was 24, because I had to listen to these girls tell their stories about what they did at the club the night before. And I would just be like, <laughs> ma'am, like, what? I just can't imagine it. To me, I can't imagine like, oh, I met a guy at the club and we just went in the bathroom. It's like, ew, gross. Like, Don't y'all know gross. about microbiomes and pH balance? I mean, at the very bottom of the, like, priorities, you don't want to be sharing all kinds of germs and fluids with lots of people. Yeah, it gives me the ick. But maybe I'm just like a very, I don't know, it just gives me the ick real bad. So, and I know there's a lot of women who will agree. I'm just saying, like, if you meet a guy and he's good husband material and he's had, like, eight girlfriends... It's more acceptable to us. It's harder for women. And the thing that happens to women, I've said a million times... They start to experience their sexual attention when they're young, right? You, oh yeah, you're a little, you're 13, 14, 15 years old. You start to blossom. You start to boys start looking at you differently. Boys start treating you differently. And some girls, that's like all they kind of know, and they mm -hmm. ride that wave until they're 30, 35, whatever. And then when the attention starts dwindling, and the men are looking at other women, and they can't get the vacations paid for anymore, and they're not getting you know, five different, you know, people swiping on them a week or whatever. That's when the conversion happens and men are very skeptical of that. And I don't think that's irrational. I think it's pretty rational for men to be like, ah, oh, yeah, now that you've had your fun, now that you're 35 and you've had your fun and it's not working out for you so much, now suddenly you want me to take you seriously. And I understand where men are coming from when they say, look, I'm happy for you that you converted. I'm happy that you turned your life around. That's great. That's awesome for you. But that doesn't mean I'm like obligated to date you. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that that's fair. The wall comes us, you know, comes for us all. It sure does. Even men. <laughs> even yeah, men. Even men. So they have this realization too, like, hmm, I'm getting up there and I have nobody to take care of me. And it's all this like list of the things that they need from somebody now that they're ready to mm -hmm. settle down. And girls do the same thing. I'm, I had my hoe phase. I'm ready to settle down. Or a guy says, you know, I've yes. sowed my wild oats. I'm ready to settle right. down. You've done nothing that would prepare you to be a good mate to somebody that's a good person. 
Yeah. And I always say like, so when Myron will say stack 50 bodies, my objection to that is why all you've practiced at is failing at relationships. You know how to break up with people. You know how to throw people away and toss people away. You know how to manipulate them. Yeah. You know how to keep people at arm's length. You know how to stay unattached. Like you have practiced the wrong set of skills. You're just going to be good at breaking up and getting divorced and leaving, especially like women. I see women practice this pattern too, where it's like, they never, they always think there might be a better one. So they dump the nice guy. My, like, I have friends who did this. They were like, yeah, this guy is so awesome. And like, I'll be talking to them about their boyfriend or whatever. Like, this is mostly when I was a little younger, but it's like, oh, how are you and Charlie doing? He seems so nice. And they'll be like, yeah, I mean, he's nice, but I don't know. I just, I'm not sure if I'm feeling it anymore. And I'm like, oh, why? Like, is, is there something wrong with him? And they're like, no, I just, you know, like, what if there's someone better out there for me? Just what if there's someone better? And so they well, they just keep breaking up with people. And I'm like, let, let's contrast how to dump people. Let's contrast to the um, conversion experience, like you just said. So they they convert and they're like, well, and they start to lose the feelings. Yep. Just like you start to lose feelings when you're dating somebody because it's not about feelings. It's about making smart commitment choices for your life. You know, it's not about how you feel because right. you're not always going to feel the same way all the time. Like you're going to yeah. go through seasons of, I hate this person. I love them. You know, that's when the love comes in and fills in the gaps of feelings. Yeah, yeah exactly. Andrew actually got roasted for saying this on, I think it was his last whatever appearance that he did. He said, marriage isn't for your happiness. Like mm. people have the wrong idea. They think getting married is about you being happy and you feeling happy forever. Like oh, I have to find someone where this feeling will just last forever. And then the minute it starts to slip, you're like, you know, actually, now that my feelings are kind of dissipating, I'm finding all these things I don't like about you. And I feel like everything you say to me is offensive. And then people just quit and they get divorced and nobody cares. And he was like, it's not really about that. It's not really for you and your happy feelings. It becomes something that's bigger. And I think when you hit that, in a relationship when you're married and you get past that honeymoon phase and then you have like something really real with the person it's actually way better and a lot of people never get to that point they've only ever had the butterflies at the beginning and they've never gotten to the part like Andrew and I always laugh because we're like we know all these people that don't like us and are trying to turn us against each other we just laugh because they're like ain't never gonna happen they don't know what we've been through they have no idea the hell that we've already seen together and that their little gossip online is not, it's not going to even come close, not even going to scratch the surface of what we have, but they don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I wish more people got to experience the, like the longer phase of marriage where, yeah, you know, all the stuff about the person that irritates you, or maybe you remember some stuff they did that you wish they hadn't done or things like that, but you're, you just see them as like this whole being that they are. It's not just the feeling they give you anymore. It's something so much bigger and more important than that. That's way more awesome. It's better than, and then you get the butterflies again. At least I do. Like you get the butterflies all over again because you see like, you almost start to see the person as like the best version of who they could be. That might sound really sappy. I don't know, but that's how it, that's, well, that's how it's sweet. been for me. Well, that's who you're helping them to become. Yeah. And, and they I feel like you. that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. We, we both do that for each other. And like Andrew checks me where I need it. And he'll be like, he'll just be like, you need a nap. And I'll be like, no, I don't. I don't need a nap. And he's like, you only act like this when you're really tired. I'm yeah. like the kid that always refuses to admit they're tired when I'm always tired and I yeah. need a nap. So, but he's nice about it. And he'll just kind of giggle and be like, honey, please go take a nap. And I'm sure that if you're still mad when you get up, then you can come tell me you're mad. And I'm like, fine. <laughs> of course I'm fine. Like an hour later, but no, it's just, I don't know. I feel like the whole stack up a ton of bodies, everybody be promiscuous so you can learn, you know, Oh, you have to run through 50 women to learn about female nature. No, you don't no. You have to grow up with a mom. You grow up with a sister you talk to girls at school, like you're interacting with women all the time. You don't have to put your thing in their thing to learn about female nature. Well, and that in itself is funny to me. My advice is like, don't try to learn about women. Try to learn about one woman. Okay. Right. Try and understand one because that's all you need 
you're never going to understand all of them. That's like a exercise in futility. You're never, it's, I don't even understand all women. So you might as well pick one and try to just understand that one. I think that's a good idea too. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, Andrew would agree with you by the way. Cause he's always like, he's like, I don't know if this 50 women stuff sounds exhausting. I could never, he's like, I could never do it. It would just be so much work. Well, you can't be- afford that anyway. No, he's just like, why would I want to do that? That sounds insane. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to check my dono chat here to see if anybody has questions about this before we go on to our our very fun game we're going to play. We're okay. Gonna do a little, we're going to do a little transvestigating. We're going to talk about the transvestigators for you guys. You're I have um one more little Twitter person that we can uh, use okay, as a yes. case study. And I think I sent you this one. It was Her name's Michelle Ivana. And she says, people ask me often if my work as a model contradicts my faith because of what the Bible says about modesty. Uh, yeah. She says, what I do know is that models are used by advertisers to sell clothes, in many cases swimsuits, and they are selling to women. I am not posting for corn. So the intention and nuance behind the image matters. God sees the heart. Uh, modesty is a more posture of the heart. In theory, yes. But this is what she's posting on Twitter. Yeah. So yeah. even if that was true, that you're just a catalog swimsuit model for women, you just nullified your entire point by posting yourself on Twitter with no yeah. clothes on. Exactly. So make that make sense. Yeah, there was a bikini barista who was on the whatever program that had a big scuffle with Andrew about that too. Because he was saying like, can you not be a barista who wears clothes? If you're like, if you're a Christian lady, like, can you not, um, you know, wear clothes while you serve the coffee? Like, why do you have to do it in a thong? Like, why does your Instagram have pictures of your butt? And she has like the very obvious butt surgery. Mm-hmm. You know, these girls that they're like skinny, their whole body is skinny, but then they look like they're carrying a full diaper back there because they went and had the the surgery where they pump a bunch of your body fat into your backside and it just looks like a lumpy full diaper. Yeah. But she, you know, her whole Instagram is pictures of her butt in a thong. And she was saying that that's fine. And this is another trap, I think, of Protestantism where they go, it's fine because Jesus loves me just the way I am. Yes, this is the McJesus build a Jesus that you get in when you're outside of the you know orthodox church you're gonna know for a fact that modesty does go to the extent of how much skin you're showing Mm -hmm. right i mean what, what they're talking about um is should i dress like a rich person or should i dress in rags and right. the lesson was like if i'm dressing in rags i'm still uh, prideful about that because you know look at me i'm so yeah. holy right yeah. so that's the modesty of the heart that they're talking about not right. close on close off exactly that makes sense yes it totally makes sense makes sense to me <laughs> and uh yeah it's like i know that evangelicals you think everything is faith based you reject works and you think that like they take it so far that they think changing behavior is works and that you're relying on that so that you'll have favor with god that's not what we're saying we're that's not what it's even about we're saying you guys as evangelicals believe that if you're moved by the holy spirit you won't want to do those things okay if that's the case then why are you still wearing a thong to work just saying so it's like it it does matter and they were kind of challenging this girl and going okay but if you're a christian lady why are you like specifically selling your sexuality and trying to tempt men and she was like because i get more tits and they're like exactly do you not see the connection and she was like no <laughs> she was just like no i don't so i don't know what the issue was there but the christian bikini barista and the christian bikini model um they're a little confused i think i think they're a little confused a little misled okay let me check the donut chat and see if you guys have any questions just yet uh only one five dollar donut chat from blue skittle who did not enter a message he just wanted to po- support us thank you so much blue skittle let me check if there's any youtube side ones uh slow boy whiteboard has been a member for nine months let's go yay Kristen! Whoa. and slow mud has boy is like member. she's a mega mod she is 
she gets she the mod it. award. Her and a couple others, Jethro, they're always at all of our shows and your shows and I Patrick's know. shows. And they're the they're best. Amazing. They're the best. I love them to pieces. And I'm one of the only humans who's ever actually met Slowboy Whiteboard. I can I will not share the secrets. Y'all don't get to know. Well, it's a secret. I Only believe I she graced us with her presence maybe one time for five minutes and then, then like disappeared like a sprite. She's said, a very she's a very private person. Okay. Yeah. She's not gonna she's very she's an enigma. You yeah. Don't just, you don't just not anybody gets to meet Slow Boy Whiteboard, but she is a real person and I have met her. So it was like a unicorn we saw like in the <laughs> mists and then disappeared. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I also got one from Mud, who's been a member for nine months. He says, I'll probably have to take Andrew's advice and head to a different country for a wife, most likely an Asian country because I'm only five foot six. Mud, um, it's okay. By the way, I I don't care about the height thing. I know that that's, most women would prefer a taller guy. And yes, I married a taller guy, but my first husband was not a tall guy. And my first boyfriend I ever had was the exact same height as me. So I... For I was a sucker for cute and funny. Like that's always been my Achilles heel. Like ugh, I, I wish I had better discernment, but cute and funny will get me every time. Mud gifts one Rachel Wilson membership. Very awesome of you. Thank you so much, Mud. Raging Patriot says he's gonna gift a membership too. Thank you, Raging Patriot. You guys are awesome today. And Justin Henley gifts five Rachel Wilson memberships. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Justin Henley. And Blue Skittle is a member for two months and said, had so much hope for her. Well, I don't think the hope is gone yet, okay? She she could be a sincere convert and only time will tell. And we should pray for her. We should pray for all these girls because, you know, there but for the grace of God go I. I could have, if I was hotter, who knows? I might have gotten sucked into all this stuff too. It might just be lucky for me that I was mid and a smarty pants instead so everyone was just like, oh, she's just like a nerdy, smart girl, right? If I had been born like freaking gorgeous and with an hourglass figure and everything, maybe I would have gotten sucked into all this stuff too. I don't know. So I always <laughs> I always say I'm lucky because uh, I'm like an adjustable mid. So it's just cute enough to, to get some pretty decent choices of guys, but not so cute that it ever really had a chance of going to my head. I think that's the sweet spot. It's a sweet spot for me. Okay, let's see here. Let me get rid of this. And then we're going to talk about the next fun topic. Okay. Have you guys heard of the transvestigators? Have you seen this? It's a conspiracy theory. Sorry, <laughs> I can't even say the actual word. I have to say it silly so that the algorithm won't pick it up. But it's like a conspiracy theory where <laughs> all of the female celebrities, all of the female like politicians, first, first ladies is a big one. There's people out there who think literally all of them are trans. And since this happy trans day of visibility, by the way, everyone. <laughs> Ooh, good point. Yeah, happy day of trans visibility out there. Um, so this I is got a timely topic. The perfect photo for trans visibility day. Okay, I want to see. Okay. Zoom in on this pretty lady. Who do you think that is? Uh oh, I feel like I should know. I feel like I should know who that is. That looked like a, a woman. I could definitely see if it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> who is it? Who is it? You got to tell us. Let me, let me get a different picture. Hold on. Keep on uh, thinking about it. That's Someone so you know. Yeah, so... This is a thing, you guys. This is a thing in occultism. This is a thing in Satanism. This is a th like a really important thing, actually, because uh, it is emulating Lucifer. So switching genders, they have been doing this. And the best uh, outcomes they get is when they find out in utero, how do you say that, utero, if it's a boy or a girl, and then they start giving it the opposite hormone. Yes. They, the Illuminati, Illuminati bloodline family, <laughs> <laughs> um, have been practicing this. And you can watch uh, my show on Rockfin called Cannibals, Blood Drinking, and High Adept Satanism, written by a guy named Kurt Barker, who was raised as a girl and a boy simultaneously, depending on what they needed him for. 
Um, so he wrote three or four books all about his childhood. And it's crazy. It, 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 it's like a horror novel, like a, like the worst Stephen King you ever heard of. Um, that sounds like but it. it was his life story. And he's like, yes, this is huge. Um, sw switching genders, going in between them. Um, the surgical part, all of it is straight up Luciferianism. And they've been doing it for as long as you can. You know, he... My first one in history that I started to get suspicious of was um, Queen Elizabeth the first. Yes, let me. I have a I have a picture here. Let me do this one. Sorry, guys, I'm not a ninja with the tech like my husband is. He's like the best at that stuff. He's like a real professional broadcaster, unlike myself. Uh, but let's take a look at. Queen Elizabeth. Okay. Looking at the young Oh, photo, I was saying Queen Elizabeth the first. Oh. Not, yeah. Because I've heard this one too. This Queen Elizabeth. But let's look uh -huh. up Queen Elizabeth the first. Because, because she had no I, children. They called her the Virgin Queen. Nobody yes. ever like had um would testify well, she was the, the first one with the crazy makeup and all that weird stuff. Yes, too. always wearing crazy. Crazy makeup, crazy clothes. Um, so that's my, the first one on my suspect list. Could be. I can see why in royal families there would be like multiple reasons for faking such a thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can mm -hmm. think of like, like you may need to make a girl a boy for the purpose of, you know, inheriting a kingdom or you might make a boy a girl for the purpose of like trying to marry them to someone else when you needed like a reason to have like uh, some kind of alliance with another kingdom or something. Or mm -hmm. like you said, or it could be those things and the occultic stuff that we all kind of know that they're into, the eyes wide shut type of stuff. And I do agree with you. I think this is a real thing. Um, there's historical examples. I'm going to show a couple of uh, people who we think it is, but there's always been like people who were pushing cross-dressing and transvestitism with occult stuff like Simon Gannot in France um, and unshockingly they were always good friends with feminists and feminist activists even in the 17 and 1800s like going back that far there was trans men who would hang out with feminists and feminists who were like uh, lesbians or like um, not even tomboys but like they would dress and live as men like those people were around way before now. People think it's brand new. It's actually not. It's just that the acceptance of it is new. But I do think, I do think that the transvestigators, the people who will bring up like, you know, they'll bring up pictures of Taylor Swift or Marilyn Monroe and they'll be like, well, see if you measure the jawline here and you measure the brow bone here and you measure the clavicle width, this person is biologically male. That's baloney. But what I think, why I think there was a big rise in popularity in that was everybody remembers Joan Rivers talking about Michelle Obama, right? Mm -hmm. You guys all know that Joan Rivers famously accused Michelle Obama of being a man and that started all the rumors and then people would find pictures I don't know about Michelle. I'll leave that up to you guys. If you think Michelle is Michael or Michelle, I have no idea. Honestly, I really just don't know. But I think that when somebody makes an accusation about someone like Michelle Obama or the latest one being Bridget McCrone from France, who is in the thumbnail, let's bring yes. up. Yes. Um, I think the reason you see so many people online making videos accusing you know, Taylor Swift or Marilyn Monroe or Farrah Fawcett or Jennifer Aniston of being men. I think the reason that that goes crazy, it's just like QAnon. It's like a COINTEL Pro AstroTurf thing where they're like, okay, we don't want anyone to really find out that this does go on sometimes in some of these cases. So we're just going to have a bunch of crazy people. We'll put them on YouTube and they say yes. everyone's a man. They yes. say every Megan Fox is a man, Jennifer Aniston's a man, Marilyn Monroe's a man. Every beautiful woman you've ever rubbed one out to is a man mm -hmm. and they're tricking you, right? Yeah. And this is like a thing and they call them transvestigators. But Jamie yeah. and I thought it would be funny to like look at a few people and do our own silly speculation. We're totally unserious. We're not like saying we know. Hey, but I'm serious. 
about this. <laughs> is that Michael? Yeah. Look yeah. at the back. I mean, a woman's back or a man's back. He's hitting the rower really hard. <laughs> but like, okay, why does he call her Michael? Why That's when um her mom his mom died? Did the money go to Michael? Um Oh, I didn't hear that one. Yeah. I haven't heard that one. Okay. That's interesting. Who, who do you think this we we still didn't Barbara. Yep. Barbara Bush. So that, that black and white picture I showed you was Barbara Bush Young. But oh, I'm sorry. Was... This oh, looks like gosh. a man in a pearl necklace. Okay, you guys. It does. It does. But you know, it's like, is it an ugly woman or is it a man? I never can tell because like, I know <gasps> my grandma on my mom's side was five foot 11. Yeah. And she, she wore size 11 wide shoes. We bought her a bracelet one time for Mother's Day that we had to get extra links put in because her wrist was so big it wouldn't fit. She was like a just a big lady, and she had some more masculine features. Although you could tell she was a woman because she had like these really big hips, and she was like a very curvy lady, but she was just big, and she was like somewhat masculine. So sometimes I'm like, well, and people say that about me. They'll be like, Rachel's got huge shoulders, and I'm like, I do? <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know, my haters will be like, she's masculine. She looks like a man. Look at her big shoulders. I'm like, okay, it's kind of weird, but all right. Uh, so what, but what you were saying, um, there is a Jessica Chastain movie, and I think it's called Miss Sloan. It was like one where she was a, um, like a PR person. And you were so right on. Whenever something starts to creep out into the light, they're going to like flood the airwaves with nonsense and people who yes. are crazy. Yes. To discredit the whole thing. Exactly. Right. That's the I point of it. So like Candace Owens came out and did this whole video about Bridget McCrone that probably everyone's seen. Now, she seemed to genuinely believe the theory and there is a lot of really weird stuff about Bridget McCrone like she met Emmanuel McCrone her husband the prime minister of France when she when he was a student and she was a teacher at his private school and she's how many years older than him a lot older yeah like 60 years older or oh, something like man, that man that looks like a wig dude it, all all of Bridget's hair looks like a wig it always does look yeah um, and then, like, there's just some weird stuff about the face. Like, there's been work done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we and all if, know. Look at... Now, if you want to do the thing, if we want to speculate, those are some fairly broad shoulders, and the, the, the ladies are very close together. And then the hips are super narrow, you know what I mean? Those are A some little... skinny woman legs. Yeah, it's proportionately, it's a little bit atypical of a female phenotype, I would say. Yeah, I think a um, woman would have a lot more meat on the lower half. Yes, usually. And same thing here, like if you just looked at the pants from the belt down, you'd think those, that was like a dude's legs. I could see that. Um, the pictures of them together always trip me out. The pictures of them together, I feel like, are the worst ones where I'm kind of like, okay, I kind of see it. I kind of see it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's one of them standing together that's like, it does look like they put a boy in a dress and a wig and just stuck him next to Macron. Let me see if I can find that one. Uh, I think it's the one where he was being sworn in, maybe. Here's one. Like, the legs are very narrow and super close together and so are the hips so i don't know and the it's not the most feminine face like if you put blair white next to bridget mccrone i mean mm -hmm. blair white's more feminine looking well, um and a lifetime of hormone replacement therapy is will I mean, do that pass, yeah especially if you started young yeah and the thing that people have been talking a lot about because there was french journalists who started investigating this because it's been a conspiracy theory for years. It's been speculated because, like I said, 
Bridget was a teacher at Emmanuel Macron's private school, started dating him while he was still underage, and then left her supposed then husband, who she had three kids with, for him. Now, nobody knows who the husband is. He has disappeared. Bridget Macron says he died. But the French journalists who were looking could not find a record of this man ever having existed. And he was supposed to have been a banker and an investor. There should be like, you should easily be able to just go to like the bank he worked for his website and do the Wayback Machine and find his profile on there. You can um, find birth certificates. All that is public record and nobody can find anything of Bridget Macron's supposed ex-husband ever having existed. And how come they can't find any, like, pictures of Michelle pregnant? Yeah. Well, just... and the, child, the childhood pictures are another thing. So both Michelle Obama and Bridget McCrone have put, they've put out or there have been pictures circulated that have been found to be fakes. <sighs> so, like, there's a picture that the French press put out of Bridget McCrone supposedly as a, like, four- or five-year-old child, and it was the daughter it was like Bridget Macron's daughter and they were like why would you pass off a photo of your daughter as you if this is true like what why would you do that what could possibly be the motivation why not just get your own childhood photos and then the other thing that's weird is Bridget Macron had a brother who nobody can find record of there like there's a family photo supposedly of her family when they were young and there's the person that they're saying is Bridget in the photo does not look like Bridget, but the person who they're saying is Bridget's younger brother or older brother does look just like Bridget. And now that person also has disappeared. Nobody can find record of the brother hmm. ever having existed. So this is why Candace Owens actually covered it. I think it also might be because she was hoping to tick off Daily Wire and just get them to fire her. Honestly, <laughs> that's what I think. But I think that, um, so the journalists who were looking into this and pointing all of this out got arrested. They got their house and their office raided by French officials. They got arrested and they're being sued by the French government, I believe. Um, it's just like a whole thing over there. And so that's why it was getting so much coverage. And you know what the internet does. If you guys have ever seen the documentary, Don't Mess With Cats, have you guys ever seen that on Netflix? Yeah, I've seen, seen it. That? Yeah, yeah. We, me and Jay did a show about it, yeah. Yeah, the internet will find out, okay? Like it's oh my gosh. a few times one of the few times the internet really does its magic is when people are full of crap and the <laughs> internet does its magic and finds like actual proof. Of course you're going to find a bunch of baloney too, but if, if you haven't seen that, it will amaze you that they solved a crime that happened in a room somewhere in the world. Okay? They saw a cat being killed in a room and just the, the items in the room, they figured out to the block, to the building where yeah. it was by the light socket, by the vacuum cleaner, by the bedspread. It's like, yep. what on earth? This is It amazing. was crazy. It was some crazy sleuthing, but it actually worked. And they figured out this guy, like they tracked down a serial killer. It was nuts. Huh. But ever since this story has broken the internet's been going wild again with trying to find bridget mccrone's childhood pictures if this person has three kids and they might really be this person's three kids but maybe bridget is not the mother maybe that they used in vitro or they use surrogacy which by the way so many celebrities are doing uh surrogate parenting it's getting insane it's getting out of hand Halle Berry and like all yeah. these actresses that are in their 50s are having like surrogates or in vitro and it's like they don't ever say who the dad is you don't know who the dad is remember Michael Jackson did this remember mm -hmm. back in the 90s when Michael Jackson's kids supposedly came from some secretary named Debbie yeah and, and then the little boy wouldn't even know they didn't even know like they just said he was made in a lab or they made jokes about blanket yeah blanket and having no name his name's blanket like what yeah <laughs> but this is yeah. this is some weird you know fuckery that people are doing out there so it's like is it possible yes it's possible because and france okay france has a long history of this stuff like i was talking about simon gano if i can google him really quick if you guys don't know he was good friends with a bunch of 
feminist activists way back then. Let me see if it'll bring up pictures. It's just going to be drawings. Yes, this is him right here. And he was around at the same time as um, like a lot of the other French degenerates like the Marquis de Sade. And who's the other one that you talk about pretty frequently, Jamie? Another French gender bending weirdo person whose name escapes me. But Simon Guinot was like a trans person and this is a famous look at the hand signals here jamie can be this. hand sign that's called the hand sign of distress so if you're yes mason you say um is there no help for the widow's son with your hands up like that okay and what does his these letters here do you know what these letters might stand for m oh, ma and pa it's ma. m a and p a i wonder if that means like ma and pa like mother father like the hmm. feminine masculine because he would say he was both um and like there's all these different pictures and diagrams of him doing all this kind of weird stuff but france has like every time i look into this kind of stuff it's like france is weirdo central when it comes to this kind of stuff i'd be like london and vienna too but paris man it's like all the weirdos in the revolutionary period went to paris and they were all doing their degenerate stuff and cross-dressing and things like that. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if France, you know, groomed a politician to be with a, you know, clandestine trans person. It honestly wouldn't surprise me much at all if that was the case. Here's another famous American one people speculate about. Does anybody know this one? Oops, hold on. I'm sharing the wrong screen now. Let me put this one up. Okay, guys, you got to vote in the chat and tell me. Is this person secret trans? Bam. Does anybody know who that is? Is that a famous feminist? Yes. Who is it? It's Susan B. Anthony. Ooh. Yeah. And the reason everybody speculates about Susan B. Anthony is because Susan B. Anthony never courted anyone, dated anyone, never got married, never had any children. Um, obviously not the most feminine looking person that you've ever seen in your life. Hey, that's a man's earlobes right there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what they do, right? They'll be like, look at the, look yeah. at the earlobes and the, the space from the nose to the top lip or the brow bone and the clavicle. Mm -hmm people will actually like diagram it out which i do think that's a little wild but i mean just looking at the photos Whoa. here yeah i'm voting man on that okay <laughs> now this is this is when susan was young and again not like the most effeminate looking person you ever saw now could it just be like a not very feminine woman sure but that i mean this is the young photo man like but the the just the famous uh mystique around the person adds to the chances yeah. that it could be yeah some skullduggery sure. going on right well, i mean and dollar susan b anthony charities um maybe it's there was a whole well, I remember Same. Susan B. Anthony was the first American person to go to prison for voting as a supposed woman. Oh, and yeah. I wonder, like, knowing what I know about how AstroTurf that was and how much of it, it's just like um, the Rosa Parks in the back of the bus thing was totally staged. It was a complete scam. It was planned ahead. There was, oh, yeah. a lot, there was a lot of that going on with the suffrage movement where a lot of the supposed, like, hunger strikes in prisons the bombings, the arrests, the like very public arrests and things like that were oftentimes staged or exaggerated or uh, outright fake. The Rosa Parks story was confirmed a uh, stunt mm -hmm. and there's even a skit about it on drug history. Yeah. That it wasn't real. Yeah, that's true. And it was the same thing with a lot of the feminist stuff. So like um, there were people in in suffrage movements who could, were they dressing men up as women to have them do some of the stuff it wouldn't shock me just based on all the other fakery that they were up to all the other scammery and fakery and lies and um you know faking stuff for the press and things like that that they did that was super common so like 
it wouldn't surprise me. Here's the other thing. I'm going to do a whole show on this because it needs its own thing. The woman's Bible, all the women who wrote the woman's Bible. This is another time that people don't understand that um, they think like the whole LGBT stuff, the Skittle stuff is new. It's not new. Obviously, you know, it's not new. But what you probably don't know is like four or five of the women who were on the editorial staff for the women's Bible were open lesbian preachers who had their own churches, their own phony baloney churches. They would just get like us, you know, there's like one or two institutions that would ordain female Protestant priests back then. And there was like a whole crop of lesbian preachers who lived with their wives, who dressed like men and things like that. And they were like, they were there specifically to subvert Christianity, not because they believed Christianity at all. And they were open about this in their writing. In their writing, they would say, we are here saying we're Christian preachers as a mockery because the mm. Christians say women can't be preachers, women can't be priests, women can't be clergy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dress like a man. I'm going to live openly with my wife my girlfriend, my lesbian partner, and I'm going to start my own church and get ordained just to stick it to the Christians. And I think there's a large crop of them who do that right now. Cause I've, I've had interactions with female preachers on Twitter that when I get to like, I'll actually have a whole exchange with them. And when I get to the bottom of it, they're like, no, I don't really believe Christianity. I think it's more of an avatar for social justice. I think it's more of an, a euphemism, a metaphor for social justice. And that's, how Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, all these early suffragists who people think are Christians, they would say this in their writing. They'd say, look, if we could abolish Christianity, if we could get rid of the Bible, we would, but we can't. It's too influential. It's the most widely circulated book on planet Earth. Too many people believe it to be the word of God. So the next best thing we can do is subvert it because they said Christianity was the heart of the whole patriarchal oppression, right? So would it surprise me if Susan B. Anthony was not really a lady? It wouldn't. I'll never know, and neither will anyone else, because she's been gone a long time. But, you know, I wouldn't think it was, like, the most shocking thing ever. So, Well, here, something you sent me was that church that Nala was baptized in. Um, I yeah. was reading their website, and the husband and wife are co-pastors. Yes. So... And yeah, Jamie and I looked into that church, the church that baptized Nala, and it's like a pop-up church. I think, let me read the, um, I want to read people there. They were doing drive drive through services for COVID too. Oh gosh, I didn't see that. It doesn't surprise me at all though. Um, their mission statement here, I think I have... Do, do, do. Yeah. Okay. So you know how if you were to go to like a Presbyterian church website or a Roman Catholic church website or an Orthodox website, even a Lutheran website, any like more mainline church, they would have their mission statement, their statement of belief. You know, they would tell you if they're Trinitarian, they would tell you if they believe in the full, full divinity and full humanity of Christ. They would tell you if they think you're saved by faith alone. They would tell, you know, they would have like a statement of belief. This is the statement of belief of the little pop-up a swimming pool baptism church that Nala went to. It's called Fearless Church, you guys. And this is their this is their whole statement of belief. Fearless is our mission. Jesus is our pursuit. People are our passion. It sounds like a corporate. Doesn't it, does. it sound like doesn't it sound oh, like your yeah. first day on your new corporate job and they're like people are our passion. Yes. Yeah. Uh family is our commitment. Worship is our weapon. Freedom is our sound. Love is our action servanthood is our position honor is our privilege excellent is our spirit prayer is our source it's like a corporate sloganeer phony baloney mega church yeah, and yeah go ahead i was just gonna say that these churches have such high turnover people usually only go to them for like a month or two before they never go back so these people get really practiced at moving their churches, um, having multiple locations to see if either any of them stick and then moving somewhere else. So they may only rent a building for like six months. The church leadership usually has a super high turnover rate, not always if it's more culty, but a lot of times, like there's a very famous one in Grand Rapids near where I am called Mars Hill. 
Um, and I've been there a few times when I was younger. It, I didn't stay or anything, but I went with other people. And that church was started by a guy who now has basically become a secularist. They have new leadership. The new leadership is, you know, every six months, there's a new pastor there. They can't tell you what it is. Like, I remember when I went there, they said, well, when I had people investing in the church, they were like, well, what do you believe? And he's like, I believe in Jesus. And they were like, okay, and what else? And he was like, just Jesus. And he thought that was like some kind of own, like, ooh, I owned <laughs> Christian conservatives by saying I only believe in Jesus and nothing yeah. else. It's like, what does that mean, right? Like Jamie said, it's like build a Jesus. It's like boyfriend Jesus, buddy Jesus, um, you know. Motorcycle dude Jesus. Jesus, seer for yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Hippie Jesus, uh, dreadlocks Jesus, Rasta yeah. Jesus. Communist Jesus. Like, it's oh, like yeah. Funko Pop, okay? Funko you can Pop Jesus. <laughs> Like a Funko Pop is the same, you know, little thing structure, yeah. but it can have all these different characters put on top of it. So, oh, yeah. yeah, black Jesus, like the Hebrew, yeah. black Hebrew Israelite Jesus, Chinese. Jesus. Remember uh, 22 Jump Street when Ice Cube would talk about uh, Korean Jesus? Don't bother Korean Jesus. He ain't got time for your problems. He's busy with Korean shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. And but that's so kind of what this is. It's like it's all meaningless platitudes. So you guys I, have to be aware that there are fake churches. There yes. is that is a thing. Fake. fake Christianity and literally like subversive CIA funded um rooted churches like Hillsong. Yes. And those big ones that all the celebrities go to, Justin Bieber and Chris Pratt. And anytime you see an A-lister converting, it's always at one of these weird ass Hillsong. For sure. And they're usually Skittles, pro Skittles, and yep. the whole gambit. So, like, let's be a little smart here. We're not trying to uh, discourage new converts and saying they're not sincere, but <laughs> scam is a thing. Yeah, there has to be a standard. So, like, I get in trouble for this all the time when people are like, they'll be like, your husband's not a true Christian because he smokes and swears. And I'm like, okay, what do you think a true Christian is? And those people can never tell me other than you have to meet some kind of standard of purity that only they believe in. And I'm like, okay, so Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, um, the Heaven's Gate cult, like uh, the theosophists who think Jesus is a great teacher. What about like people who are openly Arian or Nestorian, people who are Apollinarians, like people who believe in like long established heresies, you think they're Christian because they don't smoke. But Andrew is not, right? Like it's just, the people don't know what the criteria even is. And there's tons of churches out there, tons and tons of churches out there that use the name Jesus that have nothing to do with anything that we would, I, I always say, at least if you've got the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, I can take you seriously. If you have space Jesus and you're going to die and get your own space planet, you know, and you're going to have like your Aryan Mormon space Jesus, sorry, but no, mm -hmm. no. I'm and not, <laughs> it's no. not a Christian attribute to tolerate everything. No, it isn't. Because that's and what that's goes back to what we were saying. <laughs> Somebody who says, I don't judge. Well, you don't care. Right. And, and we're not you're, judging. You're accepting of everything. Only God can judge, but we're trying to help diagnose because we're familiar with these diseases because we've had some of them and we know people that have had some of them. Yeah. And, you know, I always tell people I'm not the, like, I'll have people send me messages and be like, can you tell me what this verse means? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm yeah. not qualified to do that. That's not my job to do on multiple yeah. levels. That's not my job. Uh, but then I'll be like, but you could go here or you could go here. And these people could probably help you. But yeah, as far as like, we can spot obvious fake churches, like also in my area, Kalamazoo, Michigan is where the Seventh Day Adventist stuff started and the Kellogg family. I'm sure Jamie, you probably know a little bit about the Kellogg family and their vegan stuff and why they created cereal as the breakfast food. You ever heard any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, they were um, like a, a cult. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to be celibate and anti-masturbatory, which is okay. Yeah. Um, but they were like super weird about it. And they thought that cornflakes would um, 
help you not be aroused so easily. So that's how cornflakes came to be such a big thing because veganism does deplete you of your minerals. You're not going to have as much energy. You're not going to be making as testosterone. You're not going to be wanting that. And they're not the only ones who do that. Everybody knows don't eat the cookies that the Harry Krishnas give you. You know, like yeah. Harry Krishna and they look all yeah. like, Ooh, and they're dressing Harry, Harry, and they're going, Krishna, oh. Krishna. They used to be at all the airports, like in the seventies, they would be at all yeah. the airports. But they put things in their cookies to make you impotent also. So that's very scary. So no, like you can't just say Jesus and it's Christian. Okay. That's there are point. actual, there are actual criteria. You have to believe in Christ's divinity and humanity. You have to, there's certain things. Okay. I'm not saying Protestants aren't real Christians and I'm not saying Roman Catholics aren't real Christian. Happy Easter to you all, by the way, who are celebrating you know, Western Christian Easter today. But I will say that, you know, I'm from an area with a lot of phony baloney Christian sects who identify as Christian and don't believe anything like the first millennium of Christianity, like not even close, not even in the same universe. And when you look into it, they usually had a grifty person who started like in the case of the Seventh Day Adventists or the Christian scientists, it would be like some woman had a dream. And then the people around her would go, she's a prophet, she's a prophet. And they start the whole religion based on this lady's wackadoo dream that she had or whatever, right? So, And anyone can there's... see those TV preachers are full of crap. Like, send me all your money and I'll send you my sweaty handkerchief or something crazy like that. You know, like, that's obvious example. The, the TBN and the Jan Crouch with the hair. And well, who is that one in Nashville? Gwen Shamblin. Yeah, or Kenneth Crazy Eyes Copeland. Yes, or uh, who Tammy Faye and Jim ba Jim Baker. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we're saying, guys. We're not saying that girls can't change their life and turn it around. We're no, just no, saying no. this is something to look out for, and we have to call it out when we see it. Yeah, and there's just, not, there's a lot of red flags with certain things. Yeah. I'm not oh, saying you yeah. can never have a family or anything like that. I pray that they, you know, get all the blessings that they can by repenting, but just don't be stupid. Yeah. And the repentance part is the part that most evangelicals don't ever want to talk about. I grew up in a church where we don't <laughs> talk about the repentance part. We just, we just give people the good news because if we tell them they have to repent, well, then we're being faith-based or works-based and we're going to scare everyone away and they won't give us money. But here's Kenneth Crazy Eyes Copeland for you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's your that's your televangelist guy who's definitely totally not possessed. Mm -hmm. Slow Boy said, remember Jim Baker's slot buckets? I don't know they if were, I remember that. They were like buckets of emergency food. Oh, really? Look at that. Yeah. Oh, Lord. And I, I do remember my mom you know this is I mean this kind of stuff I do resent it in a way too because my mother is a very smart person and she saw all this televangelism stuff in the 80s she she used to laugh about Tammy Faye all the time and be like are you serious and it's one of the reasons she just like abandoned Christianity because she saw the evangelical stuff especially mm -hmm. like let's be real in the 80s there was a lot of while there is now too but even in the 80s there was like this huge revival of like the crazy evangelical stuff that was so grifty and so bizarre. And my mom being like a not dumb person saw that and was like, well, this is all a scam. This is all. Exactly. A scam. And she oh. fell for the feminist idea that the Christian church was just there to oppress women, unless you could be Tammy Faye and scam everybody out of money. Um, you know, and she started reading like all the conspiracies, like she got really into Gnostic conspiracy books and read a ton of those and they sound smarter they sound more like intellectual than the televangelist preachers. So my mom was just like, well, obviously, because she thought John Hagee stuff was ridiculous. She thought the rapture stuff was ridiculous. And so she was just yeah. like left the church. That's exactly what I was going to say. It, um, they always link it together with the end times. Yep. Um, Z-I-O-N-I-S-M. Yep. Right. The blood moon pies so, of Israel. Yeah, yeah, and so it's stuff. like you pick up a, a carpet and there's all these like crawly maggots and beetles and stuff under there. It's like the more you look into it, the 
nastier they have like with their connections yeah and trying to grift people out of money and scare yeah. them too well, scare them just, at the end of the world it's wormwood yeah. it's the apocalypse it's the rapture it's I had the, people dming me all week on twitter about the, what do you think about the red heifers and i'm like i think the same thing i thought the last 50 times that the news was talking about red heifers that shit's been going on since 2002 when i was yeah. first on the internet and saw that stuff so it's just like you can't take everything seriously you can't take everyone seriously who says jesus just because somebody's running around saying jesus doesn't mean that they have the first idea who that person is. Jesus is a actual historical person. He's not an avatar for you to like build your own Jesus and make him into whatever you want. But anyway, we kind of went on a tangent, but we're just trying to say like, this is why you can't, if somebody says they converted, you can't just assume. Because for one thing, they might be converting to some kind of weird group that we wouldn't consider remotely Christian at all. That's number one. And number two, yeah, there are scammers everywhere. And there always has been going back to, I mean, Christ himself said there's going to be tons of false teachers. There's going to be people who are going to say my name and ha do not know me at all. So, like, you can't well, just go by that. And there was false religions set up before Christ even came that mirrored that just because they knew that that was going to happen. So they wanted to get in front of it like the PR firms yeah. do, like Zoroastrianism or Apollo or, yeah, for sure. you know, the child dying God. Um so all of these false things even came before the real thing so that people could say, well, Zoroaster came before Jesus. So that must be the real Messiah because yeah. it came first. Right. right. Yeah, I know. So there's a lot of false, false prophets, false preachers, false teachers, and false churches out there. So when somebody converts and they have all these red flags just pray for them but don't like yeah i agree with jamie to call to be like you're a used up hole and that's all your love for be that is actually not christian that's actually not what we should be doing even if they're a scammer because like andrew always says it's not for the girl i'm talking to it's for the girls watching me talk with her and mm -hmm. what listening to her cognitive dissonance when i ask her questions and she says insane stuff to me they look at it and they go, oh, I don't want to be that. Like, whatever this girl is, that's not what I want to be. Or, like, that doesn't make sense. I see the flaw. Because a lot of them, honest, like, a lot of these girls think that Jesus loves me just the way I am. They've heard the false gospel that you don't need to change. You don't need to repent. You're perfect the way you are. Jesus, if, you're, if you want to be trans, Jesus loves you just the way you are. That gay is who you are that trans is who you are. I don't believe that at all. Like I'll hear other Christians say that they'll be like, well, God loves them for who they are and God doesn't make mistakes. So if God made you gay and I'm like, God didn't make you gay. That's a passion. That's a disorder. It's a behavior. It's not who you are. Just like these people on the screen right now. Okay. These people on the screen you're looking at were born male. Who is that? This is, let me go over here. So this is like an interesting little article. Um, Whoa. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch. I want to show a couple of them because this is also like very old. But the ones who are up there are one of the most important ones. This one is Lily Elby. Um, if you guys have ever watched my series on psychology that I did with Courtney, we talk about Lily Elby quite a bit because Lily Elby was the first patient of Magnus Hirschfeld that he tried to do sex changes with. It's a horrible, disturbing story. And for all the people who were mad at Candace Owens because she pointed out Magnus Hirschfeld, it's like, Okay, uh, like Andrew Clavin was saying that that was horrible because the Nazis burned Hirschfeld's books. Well, the only reason I'm mad about that is because now I can't, I haven't yet been able to track down 100% proof of who was funding Hirschfeld because they burned his whole library. It's very difficult to find pa a paper trail. I did, however, find some Rockefeller connections, which shouldn't surprise any of us. But Dora Richter um, is this gentleman with the fan here this uh, person with the fan. Uh, this was a person who, you know, was a more effeminate type of little boy. 
Okay, we've all seen little boys who are not like necessarily the most masculine acting or presenting little boys for whatever reason. That doesn't mean God made them gay or made them trans. That's not what that means. But this person, um, you know, became a waiter in various Berlin hotels as a young person and then started, this is how it always starts, right? They start hanging out with other people who are kind of outcasts. And what are those people doing? They're partying. They are getting into some polyamory stuff, some promiscuous stuff, some uh, taboo stuff, because like, hey, we're all cast outs, you know, we're all outcasts, let's all go do DJ and stuff together after hours. And so they start, I'll never forget this man, um, quick story time. When I was working as a makeup artist in Nevada, in two, this would have been 2008, I want to say, Right around then, there was a young guy who started working there, and I was a manager at the makeup place at the time that I worked, and so I was training him and showing him what to do. This is what you have to do in this industry, which is why I don't mess with that industry no more, because now it's completely taken over by gays and trans. But, you know, I'm training him, and he's telling me about how he got hired there because he knew another guy that worked there who was also a, a gay man. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And he was like, yeah, I guess. Like, I'm just really new to all this stuff. And I thought he meant makeup. And I was like, oh, well, you know, why wouldn't you be? And he was like, no, no, the gay lifestyle. I'm new to the gay lifestyle. And I was like, oh. And he was really young. He was like 19. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, you're, you know, like I assumed maybe you'd always been that way. And he was like, yeah, I mean, I grew up in a Hispanic family where everybody's like hyper masculine and I was always smaller. You know, I have like smaller bones. I just have more effeminate features. And so like all the more masculine guys in my family always picked on me. All the kids in school always picked on me and called me a fag and this and that. And he's like, I never liked men, but after a while it was like, okay, girls aren't going to date me. The men reject me and don't want me in their social groups. The mm -hmm. men in my family reject me. So, but these people accept me. So I started hanging out with gay people at gay bars because they loved me. They thought I was cute. They'd say stuff to me like, you know, no girls were giving me attention, but the gay men were like, oh, he's cute. He's cute. I want to take him home. I want to take him home. He's like, I know it sounds really crazy, but he's like, I like the attention. I never had attention ever before in my whole life. Everybody always rejected me. And finally, there's like people accepting me. And he's like, I didn't really feel attracted to them at first, but after a while, I just thought I might as well try it because otherwise I'm going to be alone my whole life because women mm -hmm. will never want me. And so he got into a relationship with a much older gay man. He was obviously groomed and he was like, yeah, I don't like the sex, but I'm getting used to it. And I just, this was like a huge epiphany for me because I kind of bought it. I'm very young at this point, by the way, I bought into the like they're born that way stuff when I was younger because that's what you always hear mm -hmm. that they're just born this way and they can't help it but this guy like shattered that for me and I I felt so heartbroken for him because I was like oh my god he's not gay but he doesn't feel like there's any other family or community for him and so this community is taking advantage of that and grooming this kid and telling him this is the only future there's going to be for you so he's like well I guess I'll get used to it. And I was just like, it was like heartbreaking to me. So I feel like this happens more than people want to say, but this is what happened with this guy. Um, he he well, was perceived as effeminate as a kid. Uh huh. And then he started hanging out in, you know, Berlin in the twenties and thirties was a wild ass place. If you guys don't know. Berlin is and, always a wild place, no matter what year it is. True, true. But if you, uh, what's the name of that show they had? Was it Babylon? Babylon Berlin. Yeah. It really kind of illustrates just how degen the culture was in Weimar Germany and how bad Berlin was at the time. And it had tons of LGBT clubs and things like that. It was like one of the capitals of the world for that sort of thing. So this yeah. guy starts partying there and he had always been perceived as effeminate and things like that. So he starts cross dressing. Um, and then he starts getting arrested for cross-dressing and doing these things, because even then they could still arrest you for it if you were causing a problem. And he had a liberal judge who referred him to Magnus Hirschfeld, a Jewish German doctor at the Institute for Sexual Research in Dresden. Now, 
You want to talk about grooming? This is what Hirschfeld was doing. He had a giant house, a big mansion that he somehow acquired. Nobody knows how he bought it. Like I said, I found Rockefeller connections. It would not surprise me given that they were funding so many other doctors in Berlin who were doing research on hormones and birth control pills. And Hirschfeld was doing some of that. It would not surprise me if he got some money. I have yet to like 100% nail that down. But he had this huge house where he would get all of these wayward people, the trans, the like cross dressers, the weirdos, the gay folks, anybody who got in trouble, they would send them over to Hirschfeld. So it was always like people who tended to be homeless, not have any family, people who were like very disadvantaged, right? And had these proclivities. So first of all, you're not working with wealthy people who are coming to you because they want to. He was working with people who were extremely disadvantaged and in legal trouble and needed help, which made them easy to take advantage of and made them easy to do experiments on, which is exactly what he did. Because if anything happened to them, nobody would care. No one's going to file a police report. If That's you're what already I'm in trouble, Huh? That's what I was saying before. Like, nobody cares about you in a big city where you think you're living your best life when you leave the right. safety of the people that do not approve of your lifestyle and you yes. go out there that you're just going to get used and hurt. Yep. And that's what happened. So this says Hirschfeld had already helped Kurt Bear make the transition from female to male, which was a pretty botched thing, but uh, that person, I guess, passed enough that they considered it successful. At the Institute, he helped uh, Richter obtain a permit to wear women's clothes. So Hirschfeld was the only person in Germany who, as a doctor, was allowed to write a permit for these people to cross-dress in public, and then they couldn't get arrested. So this is another, like, of course, all the LGBT historians are like, oh, my God, what an angel. He was so good to the No, this guy was not an angel for these people. He was an angel of death for these people. I'm going to explain why. So um, then he would hire them to be maids or do work in his house. He would hire them to be butlers, maids, uh, help him do paperwork, clean up his lab. But like when police went in, they would say that the place was really disgusting. It was not like a sterile laboratory. It was a, like a Frankenstein type of lab. There was always debaucherous stuff going on. So this was not some like high tech medical facility, which is what you'll hear, hear trans historians will act like Hirschfeld was the super above board doctor, this brilliant genius who was ahead of his time and understood the biology. Not really. There was drugs, you know, these people, he prescribed a wide array of different kind of drugs for these people. And I think he got them hooked on some of this stuff. And they would basically just hang around this house doing degen stuff all day and let this guy do experiments on them because they were all not okay upstairs. So this is what he did. Um, he had five such employees at the Institute who were treated entirely as women. So come live in my house, be dependent on me. I'll give you a low paying job doing whatever around my weird, creepy laboratory house. <laughs> and so now I basically own you. Like, where are you going to go? Yeah. You can't go nowhere. Right. So then what he did next uh, in 1922, Dr. Irwin Gorbrandt medically castrated this guy. The castration made Richter's body fuller, restricting her beard growth, making visible the first signs of breast development and giving the pelvic fat pad a more feminine shape after nine years more surgery grifted richter with a vagina a world first and finally removed her penis i hate that uh, fat pad. <clears throat> what's that that fat pad on your tummy below your belly button who wants yeah. that nobody i guess i guess trans men do um that part sucks <laughs> hey i got a whole kangaroo pouch from five kids down there so I'm just going to deal with it, though. Uh, <laughs> after nine years, more surgery. Okay, so, however, Dora Richter's life was short-lived. In 1933, the Nazis attacked the Institute and killed many of the patients. That's baloney. I don't know why, but I keep finding articles that say this. And if you go to um, this person had a partner who wrote down a lot of their life, and so did some of the other people who were there at the time. They left journals, and I go over it in that. Um, show I did with Courtney, these people died from the surgeries. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the people, um, Lily, 
Yeah, Dora Richter was one and Lily Ebert was the other one. Lily is the first person that they tried to graft an ovary into this guy because he wanted to have a baby with his boyfriend. I'm like, oh. how are you just going to Frankenstein shove a, an ovary in there and hope something happens? Where exactly is the f- fertilization going to take place? Where exactly is a baby going to grow? Like, what were they doing? It's so like that movie with... Some... Remember that movie when Arnold Schwarzenegger had a baby? Yeah. Twins? Was it? No, twins? no, no, no. It was a different one. Junior or something like Junior. that? Yeah. No, I don't... But it was... Yeah, they're like, where is the baby going to grow? And they're trying to show you, like, in the Hollywood style, like, how a man could uh, viably carry a baby in there. It's like, yeah, right. But did, did you see that guy on TikTok who said, I want to be the first person with an implanted uterus so that I could be the first man to have a, a bobo? Yeah. That was so crazy. Like, yeah. they only There's- want to have the baby in there so they could kill it. I know. It's a whole thing. Well, that's the thing, right, with, like, these people. So, what, like, okay, trans historians out there who think that Hirschfeld was some hero... Tell me why, as this epically trained genius biological, he's supposed to be a doctor of biology, by the way, big into Darwinism and all this stuff. And people always cry about how, you know, the um, tiny mustache men burned the library. Well, that's because when they went in there and saw the Frankenstein shit he was doing to people, they rightfully saw it as a demonic abomination and burned the whole dang thing down. Now, the only reason I wish we still had it is so that we could see the full extent of what they were up to, because I think it's way worse than we know based on just what I've been able to find. But yeah, they're just like Frankenstein shoving an ovary into a guy, and then they're like, oh, he died. (laughs) That's weird. Don't know why that happened. They're trying to do like these crazy Frankenstein surgeries of taking parts out and putting parts in and trying to graft blood vessels together to see what happens. And then these people died. Yeah. So no, they were not heroes. They were not ahead of their time and just more open-minded and accepting than the bigoted doctors in Germany at the time. They were taking advantage of um, drifters and homeless people and mentally ill people and doing Frankenstein experiments on them, okay? And doing sexual stuff to them and with them. This was not some nice man who just cared about the lives of trans people. And it's like one of the most egregious lies. And I hear it all the time. It's become very popular to worship this guy as like a hero and that the tiny mustache people were the bigoted oppressors of the day who burned it down. So they said in this article that they killed this person. I'm like, that's not what's in like even the Wikipedia article, but okay. Mm -hmm. Um, At least last I checked. Although they do go back and edit that stuff. They go back and change that. So if they, it wouldn't surprise me if some people are literally writing that into the history because it doesn't look very good to say, oh yeah. And by the way, he killed a bunch of these homeless mentally ill people that he was doing Frankenstein surgeries on. That doesn't look good. But there's whole journals where this person's boyfriend details like how sick they got and how they were like, this person died like a slow, horrible death over the course of like almost a year from infection and, you know, having gangrene organs inside of them and stuff like that. This was, it wasn't the mustache people who did it, okay? It was the Frankenstein surgery. So that just drives me crazy. Sorry. Sorry to rant. But So th- this story and the one you just told about the guy who was a little bit effeminate, mm-hmm. this reminds me of the hardcore radical red pill guys and the incels because... Mark my words, what they want you is to be Skittles and to be this and to be uh, half animal, <coughs> half, you know, weird uh, Dr. Murrow science project. And they're going to take the guys who are not very good with girls because they've been growing up on corn and they're going to get folded into this like red pill manosphere, uh, you know, rock tumbler thing and accepted in that, and then they're going to eschew women all together and start grooming them to be Skittles and accepting things like sex spots and things in your butt because, you know, all women are terrible and ruin everything. So might as well let us take care of you. Yeah. 
so creepy. It's so yucky. Okay. So here's the other person I was discussing, Lily LB. They made a movie called The Danish Girl about this. Again, the movie was made as though these were, you know, strong, brave heroes who were ahead of their time. It's extremely sympathetic to Hirschfeld and to the the people involved who I do feel like they were very victimized. But this guy was he was born um a man in Denmark and showed you know, signs of being trans. Oh, this one, this one, actually no discernible signs of ever having been transgender, gay, nothing. He married a woman named Gerda Gottlieb, who was a, like a fashion model. And she would pose back then you would do like drawings, right? You would do drawings of the model in the dress for the Parisian fashion magazines or whatever. And there was one time where the lady got sick or something and he stood in and just did like I think it was just legs only like he posed with high heels and some nylons or something like that for the artist to draw and I guess he just started wearing women's clothing he said I like the feel of soft women's clothing I felt very much at home in them from the first moment now this is autogynephilia okay when you see these men on TikTok and stuff these like 60 year old man dresses up in like sexy lingerie with the nylons and the high heels and he's doing the most creepy awkward little dance and touching himself that's not oh really deep down i'm a woman i've always felt like i'm really a woman no that's uh it's a sexual fetish it's a disordered sexual fetish don't be fooled there is no oh uh, you know george always knew deep down he was a woman and that's why he's wearing sexy lingerie and dancing around and touching himself no that is <laughs> absolutely a sexual fetish and they're fetishes fetishizing women by doing this so that's what this guy was and he stayed with his wife for a long time um and they started you know being polyamorous and seeing other people and doing god knows what with all different types they were very into the swinger skittle scene um and after 15 years this guy um you know, he's, he wrote, I talked about this in the other stream, he wrote as though there was a, an entity trying to take him over. Okay. He would say, there's me and the entity that's in me are fighting for control. And I feel like the entity is winning. So I might as well just go with it. He tried to kill himself. He tried to self delete because of this. And because he did that, Hirschfeld and his doctors said, you should just go through with the full surgery because otherwise you're dead anyway, right? And this is what they tell people now, don't they? They go, you might as well just trans transition because otherwise you're going to self-delete. Mm -hmm. So it's your only hope. It's your only hope at staying alive. So they referred this guy to the Dresden Institute where surgeons removed his penis and implanted ovaries. Lily and Gerda divorced and Lily began a relationship with Claude Lejeune, a French art dealer with whom she hoped to have a child. In 1932, doctors implanted a womb transplant, but Lily's body rejected it. And by September, Lily was dead of the resulting infection. And this is Lily. So, yeah, uh, right. this is not, this is like taking people who have all kinds of problems, spiritual, mental, sexual, whatever kind of problems. They're usually vulnerable. They're usually like they need money. They're doing these surgeries for free or they're sponsored. This person in particular, I know someone else paid for the surgeries. I think it was the creeper that he was with who thought they were going to have a baby. So, yeah, this is this is what they did. It was not, uh, you know, oh, we just care about all the poor trans people who were born in the wrong body. So we have to develop the science to help them. No, this was taking advantage of very sick people and very dis disenfranchised people to get funding, right? That's part of it. And also to see if we can do the Frankenstein stuff, to test things to because there's money in that and there's other there's all kinds of different reasons why they would do it. But that's what it was. It was never this like, oh, they're just a bunch of sweetie pies who care about the downtrodden and the, you know, people who might self-delete. And I don't think it's that way now. I think there's a female doctor on Twitter who always talks about girls she's transitioning i don't know if you've seen this one but she'll show the before and after surgery pics of you know doing 13 14 15 year old girls removing their breasts giving them testosterone and they look miserable and she's like well yeah they're miserable but that's because society won't accept them it's not because of what i did to them 
It's because you're not accepting enough, you bigot. I mean, like, like I look at this doctor lady and she looks like a crazy narcissistic personality type. She's super proud of this. She takes all these selfies with her patients. Patients have the big scars and they look like they're on death's doorstep and the doctor's just sitting there smiling and like fixing her hair for the picture. And she's like, mm. it's very disturbing stuff. And I think the the surgeons who are doing this are the same as Hirschfeld. I think they're not in it to help people. That's I don't believe that. Well, if you didn't want to self-delete before the surgery, you're going to want to after because it's going to be so bad. No matter which way you're going, it's going to be terrible. Um, yep. And here's we, – we were talking about this the other day. Jay and I were talking about how the celebrities that raise their kids as the opposite gender, you know, like Angelina Jolie and yeah. Brad Pitt have that daughter that was raised as a son – um, Charlie Theron, all of these Megan Fox, they're not getting the surgeries. They're just putting the clothes on. Right, right. They're not messing with their body. And I don't even think that Angelina got her breasts removed for real. I think she just said I that. Either. I don't either. And if they do, they usually get reconstruction. But <clears throat> no, there's like this whole, who's the other one? Dwayne Wade and is it Gabrielle Union who's with him? And they're raising all the kids as girls and boys, swapping all the kids. Um, and it's like a new celebrity virtue signaling. It's like an occult virtue signaling. Like, And it's very much to stick it to the Christians, let's be real. They mm -hmm. love to just give us the middle finger and be like, oh, does this make you mad? <laughs> Let me shove it in your face. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, there's, it's hard to know, like, there's other celebrities like Pink, right, is one that people often speculate might not be a woman. What? Um, who, who are some other ones? Sound what off in the chat. So, to me. She does. Let me see if I have a picture of her here. Yeah, and she did all that Mason stuff. I mean, I know there's women Masons, but it's not really uh, nowadays a woman thing. No, not so much. There's like um, a, I think there's, there were a couple of co-ed lodges, but I think that actually it was more popular around the Victorian period because they um, were in with the Golden Dawn and the Theosophists and then they kind of died out. Like, I don't even know of a lot of, they have like a sister, sisterhood of the something moon or I don't know. There's some kind of female version of the lodge, but um, let's see, can we find pink Chuck Schumer. oh kathy griffin what do you think oh yeah oh uh see i don't know because young kathy griffin doesn't look as masculine but after the tons and tons of surgeries it's like pretty yikes mm -hmm. it's pretty yikes um the thing about pink too is like i feel like she tries to be masculine in a lot of cases but she has those hip thingies I know. I'm looking for the obliques. Yeah, those abs. Yeah. She doesn't have a fat upper pelvic area like I do. And I mean, to be fair, there are some women who have hormonal issues and can develop things like hirsutism. That was the bearded ladies in the circus would have hirsutism where they would grow like pretty thick, dense facial hair. So I'm not saying that some of these people couldn't have like issues like that going on, like legitimate endocrinological issues happening but i'm looking for this picture who else do you guys think might be sus okay here's an older uh, that one doesn't really show it someone said rachel levine assistant secretary oh yeah that's an open trans person i mean that that used to be roger levine or somebody he was like an actual dude okay i've got it I've got the picture that Jamie's talking about, or one of them anyways. There was a video she had that they really made, like, a feature of the abs. <laughs> and it could just be, like, you know, sometimes if you grew up doing gymnastics and you have a blocky sort of body type anyway, you could end up with that. So I'm not saying she has a daughter, right, or something. She has a mm -hmm. child with somebody. But, but, yeah, this is, you know, I could see... That it looks more like masculine abs, but there's girls that use PEDs or have like athletic backgrounds who can get a pretty, pretty thick midsection like that. So I'm not sure, yeah. but you know, she's one that is definitely rumored to be. Hip well, bones don't lie. 
I've seen people say Taylor Swift. I've seen them do the diagrams on Taylor Swift. What do we I think? Don't know about that. I don't know about that either. Tall. You know what else they do? <laughs> they show the picture of her with a flat butt. Oh, this one. <laughs> they show this and they're like, she got no ass. That's a man. And I'm like, oh, ah, she just kind of looks like a white white girl to me, maybe. But no, I don't I don't think so. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, everybody says Cameron Diaz. That's another one. Okay. By the way, we're just being silly now. We're not. Don't take this too seriously. We're just being silly. We thought we'd make it a funny game. Um, Cameron Diaz bikini. Cameron We're is speculating about women's bodies, you guys. There, I know I'll get at least some mean comments that are going to be like, I think it's really terrible that you guys would speculate about a woman's body. We're just being silly. People used to have a sense of humor, just so you know. Um, I'm gonna vote okay. girl. I'm gonna vote girl too. She I has find the. She has a girl aura, like goofy and silly and sweet. She was also, she was also super hot in the mask. I'm not gonna lie, like she looked pretty good. No, I'm, <laughs> She's I'm gonna a vote... surfer chick too. So yeah, I want to vote woman. I'm gonna say. Barbara Bush, man. Obama, man. Uh, I can't find Mark the McCone. picture, you guys. Yeah, I think Bridget McCrone, man. Um, let's see. Do I have any other ones here? I thought I made a... We had a list going the other day. Huh. Uh, well, we. what do you think? Queen Elizabeth the first, guy or girl? I'm going to say guy just to be weird. Just because there's so much weird lore around her and never getting married or having heirs. Um, her affairs were weird. Her makeup. Like, why would you need all of that makeup to the point where you, it's killing you and you still got to cake it on? Oh, here's another one from the... Okay, the, the here's another reason I think that a lot of these rumors get started is because in the golden age of Hollywood... There was a lot of secret, like, closeted um, celebrities, like uh, Greta Garbo, Marlene Dietrich, Rock Hudson, Marlon Brando, Montgomery Clift. There was, like, a lot of golden era in the closet people. So I think mm -hmm. that then people also think there was trans people. Like, they'll say Joan Crawford is one of the ones that everybody speculates. What do you guys think? Joan Crawford? <sighs> She's okay. I don't think so. Here's, I like, watch, here's a good picture of Joan. I watch a lot of Joan Crawford movies, and I think she's a woman. That and she also she was like she was always like rah, 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 rah. she had like a little bit of a husky voice, and she was always playing like a really sassy character. So maybe that's also why. Yeah, she kind of look at look at thirties Joan. Thirties Joan was pretty. I feel like I we, feel like we looks... watch Joan Crawford movies all the time. Actually. Um, She's one of our favorites. We like Barbara Stanwyck and her. And Oh, they say Barbara San Stanwyck was secretly bisexual, too. Let's look. But she was very beautiful. She was not very masculine at all. I grew up watching all the old Hollywood movies, too. I probably know more old movies than I do current movies. Someone gave a super chat and they said, Jamie should learn the difference between gamut and gambit. I know the difference. A gambit did, is like a when did you even? When did you even say those? I don't know. Gamut is something you run through, right? And a gambit is like a play, playing cards. Is that right, super chat, or did she get it right? Oh, Steve. It was Steve Sandman. Okay, Steve, did Jamie get it right? I remember <laughs> gambit was a... a X-Man. Like what's that? He was the X-Man that threw the cards, like something oh, that yeah, you... yeah, yeah. So it has to do with playing cards. Run the gamut and play your yeah. gamut. That's right. That's right. Okay, let's see. Um, do I have anything else here? Do you have anything else in your notes? Um, not really. We were gonna uh we pretty much touched on it all i didn't know if you wanted to talk about old steven crowder that was like what everyone was talking about this week but i don't see the thing about in that. 
my take on him is that I don't know enough to know because I haven't read the court documents. I know they're out there, but it's like pages upon pages and I ain't got time for that. So I haven't looked into it. I've seen the video and I know how this is just, I don't know. I've, I've learned in the past few months how people will take a tiny snippet of your life and be like, this is who this person is. So I'm mm -hmm. just very skeptical. I'm very skeptical because people will take a tweet I did in 2012 that in the context of the thread was a joke, but mm -hmm. it looks really bad for me. So they'll say, oh my gosh, she did this, she did that. Or, uh, you know, something like that. So I just, I know how people can be and when it's a public divorce, but I will say this, I will say this. Steven Crowder's always been weird, okay? He's always been a little bit of a weirdo. He's always been like super type A, really picky about very bizarre things. Like he's talked about it on his show. Like he's got a bunch of neurotic disorders. Like I, he's <laughs> the kind of man I could never date. Like people would be like, oh, Andrew smokes, he's gross. And I'm like, well, he's not like one of these people who's going to micromanage every detail of my life and like be all over me about like the dumbest stuff. But Steven Crowder is that personality type and he's always been that personality type. He will freak out if like a tiny detail isn't how he wants it. When he was doing his gym era, do you guys remember when I didn't ever watch him a ton, but I watched him enough here and there that he was going through like trying to get in shape. He was trying to get really buff and he was clearly on something. I don't know if it was just like testosterone or if he was on a little bit of peds but he got really buff and really huge and he was like so obsessed with the gym he'd go to the gym for like hours a day and at that point i remember there being all these rumors because owen benjamin my favorite guy would always talk about how he wouldn't get his wife pregnant that she that hillary wanted kids and he was like no because my career and it would interrupt my gym schedule and, ugh. Oh, yeah. and so i feel like i feel like he's always been that way and do I imagine being married to him as something I would enjoy? No, because mm -hmm. like my husband's the opposite. And he says this all the time. He's like, he's like the men that you don't want to submit to. He's like, I know how people think when you say submit to your husband, they're thinking of a Steven Crowder kind of guy who's like, you will not wear shoes in the house. Yeah. If you wear shoes in the house. I'm going to fuck you up. Or something you know, like <laughs> yes. that we're like, or like you have to do your hair a certain way or you can't cut your hair shorter than if you cut your hair shorter than here, we're divorcing. Like they, they micromanage detail stuff. Mm -hmm. And Andrew would always say that's lower will stuff. He's like, there's no reason to like Lord over your wife about lower will stuff. He's like, look, if you're sitting there uh, doing your nails, everybody knows I like to have fancy nails. It's one of my girly things. He's like, if you want to do your nails for two hours, and put a bunch of glitter on them and stuff. He's like, I don't care. Like, it's not hurting anything. He's like, I don't care about it. I could care less if you have glittery nails or not. I don't care. But I'm not going to, like, even give you my opinion on it. Because what do I care? He's like, if it's something important, like, you know, I think we should invest in our retirement, but you want to go on a fancy vacation we can't afford, that's when I'm going to pull rank and be like, listen, I know you want the fancy vacation, but not right now. We have to, you know, take care of our security first. He's like, that's the kind of stuff, not like these nitpicky things. And he's like, those guys are the ones that give the rest of us a really bad name. And I feel like Crowder is that kind of dude where he was like so meticulous and so obsessive and so controlling about everything. I just feel like he's like that about everything. His employees, mm -hmm. his show. Now, maybe that might be why he's such a successful guy. Okay. Maybe there's elements of that that make him successful. But that's why I think you got to be careful when you marry someone that, you know, they're not going to magically change. So if this guy was like this, like how he's been, and he was like super type A, obsessive compulsive, super nitpicky about every detail, and he's going to control all these little things. Well, why would that change once you're pregnant? Or why would that change once you're married? It probably won't. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't know the details of the divorce. It does seem weird that some of his former employees and the ex-wife are ganging up, but I just think it's one of those things that I don't know enough about to say. I just don't know enough about it to say anything, but I, I just think he's a little weird and I probably wouldn't be happy being married to a Crowder personality type. It wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't match me at all. Well, you, you mentioned something about him going to the gym and the steroids and I was watching this TikTok and this guy was talking about, um, 
taking his first cycle of steroids and it was changing his sexuality. And then he got all of these comments like, yeah, dude, I thought I was the only one. Like, I never had a gay thought in my life until I took steroids. And now, like, I'm thinking about it. And, you know, oh my gosh, getting these videos released of him trying to kiss guys and all of these rumors and stuff, you know. So yeah. <sighs> there's a lot of there's there's been gay rumors about Crowder forever. And again, I don't know. It's one of those things that I just couldn't tell you. But, you know, I don't know. Uh, that is a thing. It is but a thing. Like, that, that I'm pretty plugged, goes... into, pretty plugged into the bodybuilding world. And there's, well, to be honest, there's just a lot of DJ and stuff in the bodybuilding world. Like, in the, the people who are making a lot of money and have, like, big social media accounts, too. Like, they, there's been a lot of them that have been exposed for lots of different things. So, it's a thing. But, yeah, don't. Don't mess with a bunch of PEDs and hormones. You don't know what that shit's going to do to you. Yeah. And this kind of goes back to the beginning. What we said is like, these people are false idols and they're just show biggest characters. So you can't be so disappointed in them. Right. Being um, real people. And, you know, he does sound like insufferable from that video footage that was released. Yeah, you know, no I was like, my husband would never... No. <laughs> never talk to me like that um even in the worst fights we ever had like he right. would never say i don't love you and stuff like that but no don't That's... be so hurt because they're not christ and you know you're putting these people in place of that candace owen is not going to save you ben shapiro is not going to save you i'm not rachel's not jay's not father deacon's not like i mean he, at the totem pole he's probably the best to go to for advice right. and stuff like that right. but <laughs> yeah you know, like go to your own parish and your own spiritual father and your own church. Yeah. Right. I agree with that for sure. And no, it's like, I mean, do we really think that the people at PragerU are like on the same wavelength as the people who watch my show or your show? No. Are the people who are like big Daily Wire fans or big Steven Crowder fans probably even people who watch our shows no we think of them as like trad or con inc right they're like conservative inc where it's like uh they're basically like neoliberal first of all right all of these outlets are neoliberal they're the kind of people who say stuff like well i don't believe in abortion but i will die for your right to have one because that's the american way that kind of crap that kind of nonsense and all these people are that way right and the thing I don't like about the Crowder case is that a lot of the red pill dudes and um, Rolo always gets mad that nobody will say which ones or name them. Well, I will name him because Rolo has been saying, um, this is what, you know, all you guys think that Christianity can save you, but, you know, Hillary Crowder is a Christian. They had a Christian marriage and now they're having one of the most awful divorces ever. And it's like, okay, fair point. But that's why I, at least, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, I always say, like, no, marrying a Christian person doesn't automatically guarantee you marriage success. But more importantly than that, if you just get a basic, I think they're Protestant. I think the Crowders were just, like, kind of rando Protestants. I don't think they were Roman Catholic even. But it's like, yeah, in a Protestant church, I mean, my Protestant pastor growing up got divorced and married the lady he was having an affair with in our church. So. The Protestant churches don't care. They got lesbian bishops. Like, what do you expect? Yeah. Why do you think, you know, so no, definitely not in like a, a mainline evangelical or like a, now in some of the, there are some based more traditional, you know, Southern Baptist folks and things like that. I'm not saying all Protestants are bad. I'm not saying that. I never say that. You guys, calm down. But I'm saying like in general, no, just like having a generically Christian, uh, we are generally generically Christian doesn't help anything. Of course not. What Would we be surprised? Like everybody knows they have a high divorce rate. So I would say you have to have a sacramental marriage in the church that is different. And you both people have to understand what that is. And I think it would be better if we had that instead of secular marriage and divorce laws where everything is based around family courts. But because I think that stuff's all pretty jacked up and pretty messed up. And just why would we be surprised when anyone gets divorced now? Nobody, I mean, even Christian people will spend like 
200 grand on a wedding Mm -hmm. you know like some of these celebrities they'll they'll have a two hundred thousand dollar wedding and whenever i see that i'm like i kind of feel like you don't you don't want to have a marriage you want to have a wedding and those are not the same thing (laughs) so yeah a lot of people want a wife more than they want a wife if that makes sense they want you know they want all the benefits but they don't want to commit to anything yeah i think both sides are like that both sides like to do the wedding part they like to do the engagement part everybody likes to post the pictures but they don't understand like it's not just gonna be like this fun ride and then when the feelings are gone you can just dissolve it like a cell phone contract but that's what most people do so yeah jamie's right you shouldn't be surprised (laughs) you shouldn't you shouldn't be like shocked and sad that steven crowder didn't turn out to be like this whatever you thought he was i mean i guess i i didn't ever have that perception i was always didn't like, he okay. get memed for being obnoxious already like that's how he so yeah that that's how i always thought of him i was always like sheesh this guy is like a little bit neurotic a little bit crazy like and i didn't think he ever had anything too groundbreaking to say to be honest like i never watched louder with crowder and i was like this is the guy america needs to follow steven crowder but <laughs> but People yeah. do that. And sometimes I, I sometimes I forget that people do that. Like, they, and they do that with all of us that are on the screen. Like I had. They do it with Donald Trump. Trump. Yeah, they of do it with Donald, Donald Trump. Trump's going to say, grab her by the pussy or whatever. He's not. And then they make paintings of Trump on a cross. And I'm like, <laughs> stop it. I'm like, stop that shit right now. The, yeah. Do you remember all of the pictures when Trump got arrested? Remember when Trump got arrested and indicted and all the crazy uh, Zionist people on Twitter, sorry to say the word, all those people on Twitter, I guess I'm not going to monetize this video. Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) They all started sharing like AI artwork of of Donald Trump being crucified, of Donald Trump being Jesus, or of Donald Mm -hmm. Trump on like Calvary holding a Bible. And I was like, and they were like, see, he's being persecuted for our sins. And I was like, y'all are crazy, out of pocket, stop it right now. Like I went wild on people and some people got really mad at me. They were like, how dare you, Rachel? Don't you see he's being persecuted for our sins? And I was like, you have lost it. You are like full QAnon lost it. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Stop it. And now, now Trump, do you see what Trump's doing now? What? He is selling his own Bible that you can buy to support his campaign. And the Bible has in it the, like the bill of rights, the declaration of independence and some other kind of like Americanist documents. Uh And I'm like, so basically this is a Schofield Bible, but Trump version. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, yeah, if you buy it, the proceeds go to his campaign. And I was just like, no, I can't, can't get behind any of that and people got mad at me for that too and i was like okay what if bernie sanders ran again and sold a bible uh that uh, okay he's jewish so maybe he would sell a torah that had a bunch of it had the communist manifesto in it it had some of marx's writings in it would y'all be cool with that no you wouldn't like what if um you know a black hebrew israelite guy runs for president he wants to sell bibles with black jesus and black hebrew israelite we was kang stuff and are you guys gonna like that no you won't so it's like but it's okay when our guy does it because he's on our side and it's like they're not on your side stop thinking that's showbiz too you guys stop thinking they're on your it's side always, yeah yeah the that's only thing a big mistake i mean if you want to hate something hate your own sin because that's the only thing you can do anything about yeah and no champions are going to come save you and make the West great again unless we all convert to the proper church in the right way, um, which could happen. Yeah, it could. But it could sloganeering because- and, you know, I don't even know what to think about the Crisis King. I mean, Jay did a really good um, I, I show love on that. He did on that, yeah. But I was it's telling like, everybody on Twitter to go watch it because I was like, this is the only take that from start to finish I totally agree with and think is on point. So yeah. go watch Jay's. I, it's on my Twitter. It's on Jay's Twitter if you guys haven't seen it. But he did a really good breakdown of that whole thing. Because, I, you know, we're 
in the Orthodox Church, we get to proclaim things like that all the time. Like every Sunday we we shout cool things like that, you know, but yeah. it's not a performative, um, you know, weird taunting to yeah, someone. It's not a, and it's not a virtue signal and it's not a in your face lib. We don't yeah. we don't post it to own the libs like. Yeah, we sing oh. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death and upon those in the tombs bestowing life like a hundred times on Pascha, but we don't do it to own the libs or like to own the Z-I-O-N-I-S-T's or whatever other thing. So that was a really good point. But he, Jay kind of goes over like where all that stuff comes from and where the Zionism stuff comes from and the Schofield Bible and where that comes from. And, you know, I, I love anything that covers the genesis of ideas. Anytime you can get some information about where a movement or an ideology or an idea or some big thing that's being promoted, anytime you go back to where it came from and why it started, it usually clues you into what's really going on with that. Otherwise, you're just kind of like, I feel like you're lost in the sauce or you get like the transvestigator people where you think that this is so... Uh, common in the conspiracy world because people will find out the truth about a subject right and then that becomes their new thing their new idol it's like everything is a lie because it's all this group of people it's all this specific group of people that's behind literally every bad thing and people love that because it gives them one explanation for everything and mm -hmm. it also those people like the group who thinks that I get people all the time like why won't you name them Andy calls them name them <laughs> because because if you actually know anything about history you'll know it's not just them they're just one group there's tons of these groups there's lots of these groups that yes. do this stuff and like so when mob you think families of, there's more than one yeah they're all and criminal they fight games. each other yep yes they work together when it behooves them and they fight each other for dominance and so you got to think of it like that. You can't think of it like, but I've seen young men that I've gotten into it on the internet with who they literally say crazy stuff to me. Like I can't have a family because this group won't let me. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, how? And they're like, because they're the ones that put the corn everywhere. And now I'm weird and can't get a girlfriend. So I'll never get married and I can't have kids. And that's how they're keeping like the, the Caucasian population down. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> just like, I, and Andrew will always say like, okay, is there a reason you can't go find a, a Caucasian lady and get her pregnant? Like, is there really a reason why you can't? Like, they're, they're physically stopping you? Like, well, yeah. He, and Andrew always just says, why don't you have babies? Like, well, it's too expensive. And Andy goes, well, but the poor people are the ones that are having the most babies. So can't be that. What's your next excuse? And they're like, well, it's, it's because, uh, um well i don't know it's the they don't they control the media and uh, the debt-based economy and that's why i don't have a wife and can't have kids and it's just what i'm saying is that stuff will drive you crazy and it will take you down a totally wrong path that's going to lead to your destruction and it's the same thing with the transvestigators that believe literally every female actress every model every hot girl in the media is actually a secret man and that all of your life is a lie because you look at Jennifer Aniston and you can't see that she actually has a penis. And they'll talk like this. They'll be like, you're so blinded by the lies, man, that you can't see that you're looking at a man. Like I, I have the eyes to see, okay. My third eye is working. And so I know exactly when I look at Megan Fox, all I see is a man. I see an Adam's apple and a big jaw and mas masculine shoulders. I can clearly see she has a penis. Why can't you see it, right? And then mm -hmm. it becomes, we're the special group that has the secret knowledge and we can see the truth and everybody else is dumb. Same thing with QAnon. Do you guys remember QAnon? All the QAnon people, they were constantly talking about the reason why Trump is doing warp speed or this or that is because he has to or he's setting up the Navy field hospital so that when they rescue all the children from the underground tunnels, there's somewhere to put them. And it's just like, nobody knows better than Jamie and I that a lot of supposed conspiracies are true. We know that, but we also know there's a bunch of bullshit and a bunch of nonsense. And a lot of it's put out there on purpose mm -hmm. so that you won't be able to tell the difference. So it's just, what do you, what would you tell people about discerning this wild stuff? 
Well, first you got to get yourself right. So, you know, log off and go outside and be in the real world because not everybody realizes that everybody has their own internet and it, nobody is looking at the same thing online. It's all algorithmed and tailored to make you miserable and to take all of your negative thoughts and, uh, insecurities and everything and just feed them back to you and give you false um, ways out of it. And the only way out of it is just, you know, looking at your own self because you're the only person that you can save and go to church, repent, um, get a spiritual father, do all of these therapeutic activities and you will feel so much better about the challenges you face in life. And then you will start to grow spiritually you'll be more mature your your real third eye will be opened your news your you know the way of seeing the world like um not your pineal gland no like you'll <laughs> see how do they say it through a glass darkly or something you know you clean that squeegee that window off and then you can see clearly um after you've been properly catechized and i don't think you should be out here doing a lot until you've been i mean i I took three years off of media when I joined the church. I did nothing but share Jay's shows. That's all I did. I would make a guest appearance on his show sometimes, but, you know, until I was stable, married, had my, you know, head on straight and like a good uh, perspective. And I also have all of that experience from the past. Like on my live streams, we go over a book I wrote like 12 years ago. It's still got a lot of good stuff in it, um, but a lot of stuff I don't agree with anymore. But um, so now you can retool that and uh, put it out again. But yeah, you have to just take a break from like, just unplug, man, please. Yeah. Just go outside. Cut the grass, as the kids say. Yeah. Which I have to do too. I've been like, I've firmly resolved not to fight on Twitter for Lent. So far, I'm doing pretty good. There's been a couple of times where I've started something and I've had to be like, mm, and delete it. <laughs> yeah. It's bad. It's like Twitter and I just, I have to be really careful. With Twitter that. is made to make you hate people. I've never hated people like I hate people on Twitter. Yeah. And I'm not and even it, hateful. Like, people, just who, like, people who only know me from Twitter think I'm like the meanest, most awful person. And then they come to my YouTube and they're like, who even is this? Like, yeah. this is like real rage, you know? So I, I just looked at that and I was like, okay, I need to chill with Twitter and I need to have a lot more restraint and I not need to not get baited in by every person that wants to fight with me because I think we're having a debate in good faith and that's never what it is. Mm -hmm. They're always just like trying to um, trick me into saying something, trick me into like going off about something, you know, so I'm learning better not to take the bait. Okay. That's one thing. Everybody will say mean things about my husband or my kids to try to like get because that's my weakness that's when I'll like go off on people so I'm learning like okay like Andrew told me he's like they don't even really mean it they're literally just trolling you they're just trying to trigger you or they're like mm -hmm. mad about some they're mad about something else and taking it out on you and they don't even really mean it well and think about this a lot of people are just drunk tweeting or they're children Right, but you're, they, you're there's arguing. People whose whole account is just to troll, you know, like yeah. just to be like the. There's a lot of feminist accounts like that. Some of them are dead serious. Some of them are super duper serious. But most of them just want to point at me and be like, "Look at this weird lady. Huh? It must be so. It must suck so bad to never leave her house." And they like they make a caricature of me and then fight with the caricature, not mm -hmm. actually talk to me, the person. So I'm starting to figure out that I need to not do that. So that's good. But yeah, I don't know. Could some of these men be ladies and ladies be men out there? Yeah, I'm sure yeah. there's a few. I do think there's some. I think there's some historical figures that probably we didn't know were secretly swapped out. I think there may be some celebrities. Um, oh, you know who else we forgot? Lady Gaga. Do you remember? Um, Especially now she's had her whole face redone so much that she looks completely different than she did 15 years ago when she first came out. If you look at uh, pictures of her, Google her from like, you know, what would it be about 2010-ish when she first really blew up? And then now doesn't even look like the same human being. 
Mm. But they used to always ask her if she was because she had like a bigger nose and a less aesthetic face before she had all the plastic surgery. I still think she had a very feminine body, so I don't think she's actually a man. But people would always say that and she would never answer because, you know, she's the world's biggest Skittles advocate. Exactly. Yeah. So so she would refuse to answer. And that really fueled speculation. But she would make references in her songs like my pogo stick and my disco stick and but she could have just been doing that to advance the androgyny rumors oh here it is i've got i've got the let me show you guys the before and after just just to send it out on a high note here so there's her before and after wow they can really be some lips can't they they really can but Uh i mean you can tell like also this is the other thing a lot of girls wear this drag style makeup now like Mm -hmm. the enormous the ridiculous eyelashes everybody knows how i feel about those the snuffleupagus eyelashes that are so huge those don't make you look pretty ladies Mm -hmm. they make you look sleepy like you can't hold your eyelids open and you look like a drag queen and then she would wear like the wigs the platinum wig with then the fake tan and all the bronzer and everything that's very masculinizing because you look like a drag queen that's not feminizing when you do that when you dress and do your makeup like a drag queen it's actually more masculinizing you don't look more like a girl yeah i think that's part of it i think that's part of it but yeah they clearly did like i mean her whole eye shape is completely different her nose her mouth her teeth her jawline, cheek implants, chin implant. I don't know if it's a chin implant or if they just um, did a little bit of filler and stuff to change the shape of her jaw. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say. They have so many different techniques they do now, but oh yeah, that's like a full a full workup on her. But yeah, so now it's like, how are we ever going to know? Because I posted a picture of Blair White to my Twitter and I said, um it was like her and hannah baron because everybody was saying hannah baron hannah baron was a man because she's kind of a tomboy and mm-hmm. i posted them next to each other and i was like a lot of people think that the one on the left is hotter or more feminine than the one on the right and there was tons of men in my comments who thought blair white was the woman <laughs> It was absurd how many men in my comments who I guess they don't know who Blair White is, but they were like, damn, the one on the left looks fine. Damn, I would I would hit up the one on the left. And I was like, that's a man. Well, that's what the one on the left is fine. And I was like, the one on the left has a penis. That's what Andrew (laughs) Case says. He says a a beautiful tranny is better than a um ugly woman. Yeah. I know that's insane. Speaking of people who have their own Bible, he has one and Kanye has one. Don't buy either of those. That's no. how can you can't do that? If I ever start selling the Rachel Wilson Bible, you guys shame me off the internet. It won't ever happen, but I'm just saying if it ever did, shame me off the internet, please. Because okay. that's absurd. You don't get to make <laughs> you don't get to make your own silly willy Bible. This isn't we're not doing Schofield Bibles for every celebrity now. How ridiculous. Man, did you remember a couple of weeks ago the whole tomboy uh, makeup yes. debacle about yes. is building masculine and just it's just crazy to me what goes around Twitter and everybody has to pick a side and weigh in. Well, right? this is the other <laughs> that's the other thing I figured out about Twitter. When I look at my tweets that have gotten like millions of views, it's stupid shit. It's the stupidest shit. It's never like me sharing a piece of amazing history. You know, that will get like 200 likes. And then if I say, um, I pump the gas because I'm the one that drives the most, everyone's like, you don't have a real marriage. A real, <laughs> I'll, get men, I'll have men being like, "I'm." A, it's a point of pride for me to pump the gas. I'm not going to let my lady pump the gas. And then the women are weighing in and everybody's freaking out about if the man or the woman should pump the gas. Or when I said, I don't feed my kids Lucky Charms for breakfast because it's not good for them. I like cook their food and people lost their shit over that it was like oh white privilege you have white privilege and then it was like you're shaming people who 
have to work and can't cook a breakfast. And then it was like, oh, you're feeding your kids eggs and eggs are bad for you. <laughs> like in the comments going, no, Lucky Charms are vegan. So it's good for you. And just like people were freaking out. And I'm like, okay, so this is like, you say something really obvious or low hanging fruit, dumb stuff so that, because then everyone can weigh in with an opinion. If you say something really smart, people don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. in response to it so you, those tweets don't pick up anything but you just say something basic you just give a basic take on something dumb everybody freaks out twitter is a zero-sum game for yeah. real yeah for real all right we got a few we got a few donut chats and a few super chats to do so let's see um see me roland sends ten dollars thank you so much for the support doesn't say anything they see me uh, rolling. <laughs> Jamie will sing for Super Chat. Rolling. Those streets trying to catch me riding dirty. Okay. <laughs> I won't. I can't sing. You don't want to hear it. I sound like the female Willie Nelson. Nobody wants to hear it. <laughs> uh, Slow Boy Whiteboard says, how about the female equality of getting punched by men now? That's not the funny quality. I have not looked into that. I guess there's random women in New York City getting punched in the face. Mm hmm. Do you know anything about that? I haven't looked into it. Yeah. Um. I think this is a coordinated thing. And I think we're going to see more of this as people become more and more hateful and they try to put off their uh, responsibility and guilt onto the, the juice uh. and and the feminists and just whatever that they can pin on uh, the reason for their misery. Yeah. And a lot of people... Um, Unfortunately, the object of that misery is women, and they get mad at promiscuous women, not for being promiscuous, but because they won't be promiscuous with them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Well, that's you're ugly like, anyway. You're a whore because they reject you. Yeah, them. I don't even want you. You, yeah, yeah. I've, I have seen those people. Those people go off on me too, and I'm like, I'm a married old lady. What are you yelling at me for? Yeah, like, you tell, tell them now, and they're like, well, you're fat anyways. Like, blah. yeah, and okay. I'm just like, Okay, so, sir, stop yelling at me. Okay, um, that's really bizarre. Uh, I don't think we should punch everyone in the face, but I mean, the to slow boy whiteboard's point a little bit now, it's true. Uh, this did start with women. Um, do you guys remember a few years ago when it was like Antifa and Patriot Front and all these groups that would like be protesting, and there would always be some little Antifa girl or some little BLM girl, some little five foot tall chick in flip flops and leggings who would walk up to some huge like Patriot front guy with an American flag, like some six foot four dude and just like sock him in the face. And you're like, what are you doing? Why are you little tiny women out here trying to like beat up dudes in the street? And I'm like, I really think they got psyoped by all the, uh, movies and tv shows of ass kicking chicks and they all think they're like little ninjas like the girl the girl on whatever who told andrew that her friend broke two grown men's broke both their legs that two men attacked her friend who was four foot eleven and her four foot eleven friend broke both of the men's legs because she knew jujitsu and the women were all like yeah they can totally do that yeah like like, if you practice jujitsu, you can totally, like, just beat the hell out of dudes. And I was like, they are so, they're just so brainwashed. So I don't know if this is, like, the opposite thing of that, where now men think maybe because of video games or because the women are saying we can fight you, like, we can beat you up, that now we can just punch the girls in the face. I don't know. I'll have to look into it and see, like. Uh, someone says it's been going on for years. Has it? I didn't know. Um, see, I'm, I'm not in the city, so y'all can deal with that <laughs> i don't want to okay let's see uh steve sandman sends five dollars oh he said gamut gambit which we already established that jamie knows the difference but thank you steve um the alcuin project sends ten dollars why are many eastern orthodox churches part of the world council of churches other members include pcusa elca episcopal and united methodist church as well because no church is completely immune to this NGO nonsense. Jay and I did a show about this. It was the second one we did over on his channel where we talked about institutional capture of churches and how 
yes, even among Eastern Orthodox churches, there are some churches that do get co-opted and infiltrated by NGOs, or they get convinced that joining this or that um, body is going to like be helpful to the cause in some way, or that interreligious dialogue is good. So there's no church that's totally immune to it. I'd say our church is probably one of the least uh, infiltrated in that way, because all the other ones are like full send. Like, I think the Lutheran church is projected to die out in the next two or three decades, because that's how bad it is. They've got all the female bishops. They've got more. I can't remember. It's in my academic piece I wrote, but they've either got more female bishops than male bishops or female priests overall than male priests now. It's like so bad. Mm. So when you get to that point, I feel like, but I mean, we had the Arian crisis and the Arian crisis was like, far and away the majority of the church fell into heresy for a time and it was only a small group that kept it going and then eventually won out so this this sort of thing happens it's part of having a worldwide institution there's going to be some churches that are going to for political reasons financial reasons social reasons join some of these things and it doesn't mean that we like it or we agree with it but we also don't have like we're not like the Roman Catholic Church where if our pope says something the whole body has to follow it. We may have one rogue bishop or one rogue like like the new Ukrainian church that's kind of like a CIA church. I don't think we would necessarily claim that organization doesn't mean the people who go to that church aren't sincere, but you know what I mean? Their geopolitics affects all the churches is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and it it's a concerted effort to infiltrate, like you just said. Um, yeah. We have the documents, folks. Yes, and we do. We've recorded the shows on it. Yeah, and they're trying to push deaconesses. I'm doing something. Um, I'm doing a little piece on that, but it's taking me a minute because I have to be very careful. And, you know, my priest has to approve, and I'm going to run it by you know, Father Deacon Patrick and Father Deacon Ananias and a few other people before I put anything out because I want to make sure that I'm being appropriate if I'm going to say anything about something like that, but I, it is in my plan. So let's go to the dono chat. I got a couple of donuts. Yay. Earth to Emily sends $10 and sends me a wavy face. Hi, Earth to Emily. A wave, a waving emoji, not a face. Uh, Steve Sandman sends $30 and says, you need more dono chats. I agree. I do need more dono chats. So send me some. And then Christian P sends five dollars and says, "Awesome to see you two together." I smiled when you mentioned Joan Crawford. Mommy Dearest was an insane movie. I told you not to use the wire hangers. Yeah, my mom used to do the wire hangers joke all the time when I was a kid. That was a good movie. Yeah, that was a good movie. Some that was some wild stuff. Joan Crawford was, she was a quite the lady. Dude, she had a fifteen-year career in movies. From the yeah. 30s until the 80s. Like, she was a good she's actress. She's probably one of the best. Yeah, she was really yeah. good. I mean, you go back and even the really, I was just watching a clip. I follow all the like old, old movie clips channels on Instagram because sometimes you find some crazy gems on those things. And it was like a old movie of hers where, and it was just a scene I had never seen before. And I was like, dang, she was good. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of times the most talented actors are really crazy. And I don't know if it's because they can, they're they actually channeling like things or if method acting easily crosses over into spiritual stuff. I don't know why. Or it's just creative types because a lot of musicians are crazy too. You'll have to come um, to my live talk to find out what's up with that. Yeah, I want to. Yeah. Are you guys going to do any more of this? Vegas by the way? Maybe Las what's Vegas that? in June. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be cool to see Jay and Jamie in Vegas. And Isaac okay, Whitehouse and Jamie. You Kennedy. have to tell us before we go what streams you have coming up, anything you're working on, anything you're doing, anything you have going on. Okay. Um, new show on Rockfin, uh, Manly P. Hall. Manly P. Hole, as Jay likes to call him. Um, <laughs> Secret Destiny of America. And this mm-hmm. week we're going to do the Secret Architecture of D.C., and um what was after that oh me and jason i mean not jason um 
Paul are going to do some Disney movies. I'm going to do a live stream on April 8th for the eclipse. And I wanted to, everyone's going over to um, Patrick's show right now after we're done. And I wanted to make a request for you and Patrick. I don't know how to okay. sponsor a stream or go about doing that, but okay, I'll write it down. I think it would be fun for you and him to watch this documentary. There's, it's two. It's a dual documentary um, called "Boys Alone" and "Girls Alone," okay. and it, it was an experiment they did to put boys in a house with no supervision for a set amount of time and see what would happen, and then the same with girls to see what would happen. So I, I want you to watch those two things. They're not very long. They're only like thirty minutes, <clears throat> but it was something they did in the UK. Yeah, and I think that would be a really good, um, fun thing for you and Patrick to do. You know, we haven't done one in a, like a couple months now, and I feel like we're due. So I'll message him about that, and I'm sure he'll be down to do that. So that's okay. a good suggestion. Okay. And then Wicked Wally sends me a last-minute super chat. He says, I put an iguana on a computer. Now it's a monitor lizard. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> all the dad jokes. All the dad jokes. All right. Well, thank you guys for showing up to our live stream. Thank you for coming. Um, next time I think we're going to try dual streaming when we do a show and we'll see how that works. Or maybe we'll just go back to Jamie's channel next time and switch back and forth. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I don't know how to do raids. I don't know if you can do them on StreamYard. Do I have any tech geniuses who know if I can raid Patrick or not? I've been like looking and I don't see anywhere because I'm just on StreamYard. I don't use OBS. I don't know how to do it on YouTube. I don't know how to do it here. So do I have to go to my YouTube to do that? You might have had to do it when you set up the page. Because, mm. yeah. We'll talk about Let me just check really quick. Everybody stare at Jamie's beautiful face while I see if I can do this. Somebody was saying they it's thought... They knew... we'll just... Oh, it hasn't started yet? Okay. Oh, it has to start and then you can do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, if it hasn't started, can you guys confirm that he has not started? Oh, wait, you can't. 10 minutes. Oh, he's still 10 minutes away. Yeah. Okay, well then, guys, just go over to Church of the Eternal Logos YouTube channel and watch Patrick's stream. Because if you like our stream, you'll probably like Patrick's streams. They're pretty great. Um, and I've done a bunch of content with him if you haven't seen him. Also go to Jamie's channel. I'm going to put her in the title because I didn't do that. For some reason, I forgot, but I'll tag her channel in the title after this. But it's just Out of This World with Jamie Hanshaw. And if you want the really good stuff, go to her Rockfin because her Rockfin is awesome. I love her Rockfin and she's very funny. I think she, <laughs> everybody thinks Jay, Jay is the comedian, but I'm like, nah, Jay, Jamie is the real low key comedian because I don't know. I just think your sense of humor is so funny. She's always cracking me up. She just likes, she sneaks in like you're not expecting it. <laughs> Do you not expect it? She just slides in with a zinger and it's like, where did that come from? So thank you so much for being on my channel, Jamie. Yeah, and we could do this all night, but it's time I for- know, We could Patrick. woman prattle all the live long day. Yeah. But we went three hours and 20 minutes. That's Is that the longest we've done? I think so. Yeah. Probably. probably. Well, thank you all for hanging in and sticking with us because you got we had a pretty big audience tonight. So that's pretty great. Thank yeah, you all for coming. Yeah, it was over two yeah, awesome. So y'all have a wonderful rest of Lent and we will see you soon. Andrew is going to be, um, I can say it because he said on Twitter now, he's going to be doing a show with Gavin McInnes in a couple days. He's on his way to New York right now. He's on a plane. So his little promo tour is not quite done. So if you love The Crucible, go over to The Crucible and keep your eye open for some content with Gavin. And then when he comes back, he's doing a 50,000 subscriber pizza party. So stay tuned for that too. So. Good job. All right, guys. Thanks so much for coming, and we'll see you guys next time.